opened up to shut him right down. Well, this dark side core of linebackers are exceptional. Well, what San Diego State does so well, and you, and you see again, who's the first man at the point of the attack? Morrison, and then the other backers coming in to finish off Brathway. Against teams that get a little bit lazy, sometimes that cutback lane is there because everyone's not pursuing. The San Diego State defense, those backside guys come to the football. They're going to run 11 people to the ball, yeah. and uh, that cutback lane is only there if they overrun it, but they're not going to be lazy on the backside. They took good angles that time and just took that cutback lane away from Brathway. Cougars with 11 yards. Minus 11 rushing back over the middle wide open and Brathwaite would have had first down yardage across midfield Actually, he would have gotten back near the line of scrimmage. I misread the yardage marker there Not close to first down yardage, but the play was there for back All right, San Diego State's gonna bring people off the right side watch And what that's gonna mean is is an adjustment on the outside and a hot receiver and Brathwaite looked like he wasn't expecting the football and those are the kinds of plays You got a young quarterback making a good read here making a good read seeing the blitz and getting rid of the football a receiver's not helping that quarterback out. Cougars one for two on third down, third and 17 here coming in. They were just 33% on the season. This is a tough one though, third and a long way. Back under the gun, across the middle, to midfield, not close. Jacob Elamimian bringing down Chris Hale right away. So once again, we'll see Matt Payne. See, when, when you're a defense and you've got a team in third and 16 or 17, you've got a great luxury. You can come after the quarterback knowing he's got to get rid of the football before you can get a receiver deep enough to get you a first down. So they'll let you throw that underneath ball, and uh, they dictated where John Beck threw the ball with a blitz that time. Payne with plenty of time just hangs it up there. Kyle Connerly watches it go into the end zone. 51-yard punt for Matt Payne, who came in averaging just about 45 a game. You're watching College Football on Sports West. We're back after a message from your local station. Jeremy Roenick! Ha-ha! <laughs> yeah, playing with the big boys now. I'm going to put your stick on my wall. Because I've been playing ESPN NHL hockey. I've done the skills competition. <laughs> I'm fast, I'm agile, and I'm accurate. Don't get scared now. <laughs> Don't get scared. Best College Football Telecast is brought to you in part by Advantage Rent-A-Car. Book online at ARAC.com and receive double frequent rental club points from Advantage. Bronco Mendenhall has come in and has turned around the whole defensive philosophy at BYU, talking about effort and execution, and there's a little bit of both right there. And we talked about San Diego State's pursuit of the ball. BYU, that is the hallmark or trademark of this defense. Now, you will see wherever that ball goes, 11 white jerseys to the football on every play. If you don't see 11 jerseys running to the football, what happens is on Monday in practice, they run sprints for every time somebody loafs on the field. And Bronco Menhall keeps track of those loafs. So they run sprints for points scored against them and loafs. And nobody wants to run those sprints. So 11 guys to the football on every play. There goes Hamilton probing the left side. He has six or seven, maybe eight yards up near first down yardage. What a start for this young man out of Stockton, California, second in the conference, 119 yards a game, 12 nationally, averaging 5.3 yards a carry, three touchdowns already, three for 17 yards already tonight. Boy, and, just, and you mentioned just a freshman, he's got a 220-yard game against Samford already in his back pocket as a freshman. You see the 5.3-yard average. I mean, that's a great line for a season for a true freshman running back, and he's just getting going here. And they are very excited about the future of that young man. If they can keep him healthy for four years, he will uh, set all kinds of rushing records here at San Diego State. John Kraft said he shocked him. He, he's strong, and he's not overwhelmed by the speed of the game. I mean, this is basically a, a true freshman who's come in, and he's able to, to, with poise and maturity, understand what this complicated offense is about and understand what they want of him, and he's really good about setting up blocks, although he didn't have much of a chance there. Boy, and you saw a very physical play. Running back Hamilton with a lot of, look at Aaron Francisco. That was a great shot of Aaron Francisco and the way he plays. Watch him run the alley. I mean, he comes up from that safety position, 
full speed, and then just takes the back and drives him backward. And that's the that's the way Aaron Francisco plays. One of the most physical safeties in the Mountain West Conference, and he just stops Hamilton dead short of that first down. Seth Santoro again. Ready to put the foot into it. Toby Christensen waiting on it. Fair catch at the 31. And that's where John Beck and company will take it. 40-yard kick for Seth Santara, part of the rather remarkable team of walk-on kickers for San Diego State. We'll talk about that as the game goes on. This Sports West College football presentation is brought to you in part by Delta. Now Sky Miles members can check in from their home or office at delta.com. But no surprises here early, Tom. We thought two good defensive football teams would show up. We thought that both defenses would bring pressure. We've seen that. The only surprise is that San Diego State's defense scores right off the bat. And you look at the NCAA rank for both of these teams and the yards allowed. Great defense. There's Daniel Coates involved early in the offense. They thought there might be some room for tight ends to get involved. And when you talk about tight ends, and true freshman, there's none better in the country. You and I were talking at breakfast today, Tom, about tight ends and, and whether or not they're open and an adjustment that a young quarterback has to make out of high school. Tight ends don't get open by 10 yards in college very often. They're not the guys that go out and run 4-3 and just run away from people, but they're big and physical. And if they've got a guy, if they're side by side or they've got just a step, the quarterback has to be confident enough to throw it in there. Looks like John Beck's getting that confidence tonight. Beck rolling down the middle, wide open. It's tipped, but Coach has it. And out of bounds at about the San Diego State 35. I believe that was tipped and he adjusted. Oh, and, and, and everybody's been asking, where's Daniel Coates, the great freshman? Watch him. They stand him up so you can't jam him on the line of scrimmage. Look at him. He runs like a wide receiver. But he's 250 pounds. The ball was tipped. He made the adjustment, caught the fluttering ball, and then uh, turned it into a big play on a bootleg. He's the second-level receiver, Toby Christensen underneath. And Coach runs routes like a receiver. Blaney's already broken BYU freshman records for yards, catches, and touchdowns. Beck 5 of 7 for 52. Now he tries the option with Marcus Whalen. And he runs into a couple of guys in black, led by who else? Kirk Morrison and Marcus Demps, first time we called his name, up from the strong safety. There's Mike Tanner. Came in with a little bit of an ankle and looks like well, if they're, looking, if they're spraying it, that means they're about to tape it up again, doesn't it, Blaine? Yeah. It's, uh, he's going to get a new tape job, and I'm sure he'll be back out there. Mike Tanner playing that middle linebacker position, anchoring the center of that defense for BYU. Boy, what, what about Kirk Morrison already? Tom? Every running play he has been involved in. I'm just going to say you know who next time. Back. Plenty of time going to Coates. Good coverage right there. That's Stephen Larson making the play. Well, and that's a heck of a job for a linebacker. Stephen Larson playing that strong linebacker, and, and he's a junior out of Chandler, Arizona. And watch, he, he goes in, he's on Daniel Coates' back, grabs those arms and pulls it back. And uh, he was running pretty well with a speedy tight end. So but nice he was play. behind him. I mean, Coates had him yeah, beat. Yeah, and if, the, and, and if the ball is just a little bit more in there, Coach catches that. But at 6'1", 235, Larson did a nice job of running with the tight end. Cougars right on their season, season average for third down conversions. One out of three, and there goes Thomas Stansel on the little counter. They've been trying to find ways to get Thomas into the lineup, so they're trying him at wide out. 5'6", 167 redshirt freshman from Bakersfield. Oh, you should see this. He's, he's just 5'6", and, and you mentioned he's not real heavy, but he's put together. He is a solid running back. He's built very low to the ground. And you saw in that play, he just runs away from people. Yeah. He has tremendous acceleration. And uh, they're trying to figure out ways to get him the ball out in the open field. And an interesting inside counter from over on the wing. Draw, trying to go up the middle, and he is lit up inside the 10. Matt McCoy introduces himself to John Beck. Marcus Demps came on to help him Boy, out. You know, we talked about that dirt infield, and uh, John Beck just got a head full yep. of that dirt infield. And I'm telling you right now, that, that stuff is gritty. It's like falling on sandpaper. And you see he got his head rubbed into that dirt, and uh, that cannot feel good. Playing the Cougars trying to scratch a very, very, very old itch. No rushing touchdowns in 30 
quarters dating back to last year's Wyoming game, and they're inside the 10, now second to one. They're going to try to throw for it. Back on the go. There's a flag down as he tried to hook up with Fahu Tahi out of the backfield. I think what you're going to get, you're going to get a holding in the end zone. Daniel Coates trying to run a crossing route across the end zone, and difficult to cover, so the best thing to do if you want to cover, just grab a hold. Yeah, that'll work, unless they see it. Ryan Ayata pressuring back. You holding. see, Phil, you're reading the words. It's uh, holding because it wasn't pass interference. Yeah. It was after. It was before the ball was thrown. But as as coach tried to get on his route, um, he was just latched onto by the defense. And here's Terry Layden. Holding, defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Seven plays, 51 yards on this drive. A little over two and a half minutes, 231 to be exact. Tom Kraft can't be too pleased with how BYU is marching right down on this dark side defense. But well, he, he's a fun guy to talk to. He's got a great attitude about what he's trying to get done here. And we, we were talking to him saying, boy, it looks like you've arrived. He says, no, we still have some pieces yeah, yeah. we need to put in place. We still have some things we're trying to do. We're very pleased with where they're at. They're trying to get in, and there it is. First Cougar rushing touchdown in 30 quarters, and it is the first time the Aztecs have given up a rushing touchdown all season. They were the only team in the country to boast of that before that run in by John Beck. Well, and they're just going to run inside trap. Open Mohital, big number 63. Watch him get out in front, and then John Beck just going to go use him as a screen and get into the end zone on a quarterback draw. And Matt Payne hammers it through, and we're deadlocked here. And if not for a turnover touchdown, the Cougars would be feeling even better about themselves. John Beck leads them all the way down the field. Eight plays, 69 yards. We're tied up here in San Diego. Matt Payne getting ready to kick it. There's the scoring drive. Interesting that John Beck accounted for 46 of those yards, 34 passing, 12 rushing. Of course, throughout the game, watch for the first down box in the upper right corner presented by Panasonic Wireless. Right now, you can receive a $100 rebate on the GU87 wireless phone. Panasonic, ideas for life. Aztecs up near the 30-yard line, and I believe that's the kicker, Matt Payne, in on the hit as he takes Jason Van down. Big play of the first quarter presented by Xbox Live. Here's the Xbox big play, Blaine. And, of course, the biggest play in that first quarter, a strip of quarterback back, and then Miller takes it all the way into the end zone for the first touchdown in this game, and that was the eighth straight game that San Diego State has scored the first points in a game dating back to last season and an early comfort zone for Adam Hall but frankly it's looked like his first game of the year he, he played briefly in their opener before going out with the sprained ankle but uh, Tom Kraft's offense not exactly hitting it on all cylinders well, and, and this blitzing defense it will cause you some concern people come free and Hall hasn't been in there at game speed for a while there it is there's game speed fingers An absolutely perfect throw down the middle but what made this play was the pickup of the blitz by the San Diego State offense you saw the back step up in there and make a block and that was Lionel Hamilton the freshman who stood up and picked up the blitzing linebacker that allowed Hall to stand in there and make the throw so credit the backs for a great pickup of the blitz otherwise that play doesn't even get off uh, the scheme worked perfectly we well, see Hamilton working on pass protection there. And then Hall stood in there, trusted the protection, and just threw a perfect strike down the middle of the field to Jeff Webb for the touchdown. Bronco Mendenhall told us in meetings yesterday, we know that these San Diego State receivers have talent and speed. We just haven't seen what they can do this year because San Diego State's backup quarterback, Matt Dugalecki, hasn't been able to find them in certain situations. They've been open. Well, we certainly saw what Jeff Webb can do in the open field. Chad Barney had no chance once he caught the ball. 
Oh, and, and they do. San Diego State always has great speed on the outside. They recruit great wide receivers. They're going to have talent out there. And as you mentioned, haven't been able to get that talent deep because the quarterback just hasn't been able to get it there without Hall there. Boy, a confident throw and a confident Hall standing in the pocket that time. You know what we were talking about this big defensive struggle, Tom? <laughs> I had a feeling we were going to curse it. 340 left in the uh, first quarter. It's 14 7. Yep. Just as we anticipated. Just turning back the clock to uh, years past. Cougars have doubled the time of possession, and yet the Aztecs have doubled them up on the scoreboard. Of course, they did score their first touchdown without the use of an offense. Boy, and, and San Diego State, Tom Kraft's got to hope that that balances out at some point. I, I guess unless you score one-minute touchdowns every time, but you don't want your defense out there continually on long drives all night long because the game stays tight and you get in the second half and that defense starts to get tired. So you're hoping that your defense can get a, a three and out here and get your offense back on the field, take some time to let that defense rest a little bit. So far, John Beck and the Cougars have balanced out their offense. There's a strike over the middle. Who else? Once again, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to say who else, and you'll, you'll figure it out. There he is, Kirk Morrison. Boy, he is he is well on his way to another double-figure night. Watch uh, as you see Morrison, in the, and he's in his pass drop in the zone. He gets a beat on the receiver, Rod Wilkerson, on a crossing route. And as soon as that ball leaves the hand, he starts to break on that receiver. A five-yard gain on first down for BYU. But Morrison, another tackle to add to the tally. Blake getting a block from Fahutahi, trying to cut up near the 30. He'll be a little short, setting up a third and short. Marcus Demps coming up from his strong safety spot, and he's a little dinged up, reaching for his head. Well, and uh, Demps, he moved from free safety over to strong safety this year. He's number three on the team with 33 tackles, and let's take a look and see if we, you can see what happens. He's coming back to the inside, makes the hit, and then his own guys come from the back side and run into him there. That happens a lot, you know. You have two or three defenders breaking on a guy that's carrying the football, and your own guys hit you harder than, uh, than the guy that's running the ball. He's getting some help off the field. And that's course, not good for the dark side defense. Of course, Marcus Demps is the uh, younger brother of former Aztec, Will Demps, who oh, yeah. plays with the Baltimore Ravens, great player here for the Aztecs. The team has a little bit of a defensive attitude there in Baltimore. Take a look at his foot. Gets that foot planted now. And then watch how that bends over. It's kind of ugly. It just gets caught right underneath him and stretched out the, the back uh, of that hook, of that foot, the Achilles. Boy, that did not look good. Third and one, Fahutai trying to power forward, and I do not think he got it. We'll have to see where they mark it, but at the moment, and that's interesting because at six feet and 234, the sophomore from West Valley City, averaging just w less than two yards a carry. And wow. And that has been an area for BYU where they've really been lacking this year. They have not been able to run the football on third and short. And if you're going to be successful and move those chains as Gary Croton wants to, you have got to be able to knock people off the ball and get first downs on third and one. Offense is deep in their own territory all season long. Kyle Connerly and hits him, and he scoops it up and wrapped up and ends up losing yards. Lance Pendleton, the former quarterback, makes the play. 45-yard punt, and that has to go down as a loss on the return for Connerly. I, don't, I think Connerly wanted to get out of the way. Hit him. He was going to try to catch it, and then now watch. He's decided to get out of the way, and the thing just bounces right at him. And he's extremely fortunate that that thing bounced right back up into his hands because he was he didn't want to have anything to do this. He was going to move away, and that ball took a right-hand turn as if he had a magnet attached yep. to his belt. And then, then he was in trouble but got a good bounce and was able to bring it back in. Very fortunate that that wasn't a special teams turnover. And Adam Hall has to be feeling pretty good about himself after that last long touchdown. And go back to Hamilton. Picking up blocks, cutting it outside, more yards, first down, out near the 40-yard line. Perfect illustration of the poise of the young man picking his blocks, waiting 
and then going. Well, Tom Kraft said what, what has been most surprising is the way he's adjusted to the college game in terms of the speed and his patience on the field. He's got a very mature running style. You saw him let, let the block set up. He's got great natural vision for where that hole is. He broke that back against the grain and uh, picked his way for a big first down. We've already seen that he steps up and blocks well in the pass game. The complete back right there. Hall puts it on the ground. There's going to be a loss of a couple. Well, and that was just a... Jasper Harvey unable to connect with his quarterback. Yeah, that there. was just a quarterback uh, and center exchange on the ground. Hall did the right thing. He used to get down and get on it. It isn't like he's just been back a couple days, though. They cleared him last Thursday. He's been practicing since Friday, so he, he's known he'll be here Saturday for more than a week. Well, and the key for San Diego State tonight is to protect him, yep. to not make him move laterally. If Adam Hall can stand in the pocket, he can step forward and deliver the football, he's going to be in good shape, and this offense is going to be in good shape. They'll try another running back. That's Michael Franklin. Colby Bockwald coming up. Bring him down. Short pick up there. Franklin, 5'7", 180-pound sophomore from Nolens. At 55 yards at UCLA. I mean, he's a guy who knows how to run the ball. Well, he was their leading returning rusher coming yep. in. He had 346 yards, a 5.6-yard average last year, and came in and really had his job taken away by a true freshman. But that gives uh, Tom Kraft a one-two punch in that offense where he can bring in Michael Franklin and be confident that he can spell Lionel Hamilton. Aztecs coming in 0 for 2 on third down so far tonight. 26% third down conversion for San Diego State this year. That's not very good. Uh, both of these teams have struggled on third downs, and, and that's part of the problem with the two offenses. That's why they're seventh and eighth in the conference. Here's Terry Layton to tell us what's up. He's going to reset the play clock. Thought he wanted the crowd to pick up the volume a little, pumping it up a little. <laughs> Here's a nice formation. Four people split out to the right. We'll check out there. And look at the BYU pursuit. Aaron Francisco leading the way. Jeremy Justice, the tight end. Short gain there. We reached the end of one. And it's the Aztecs, thanks to a couple of very big plays. They're up 14 7. somewhat chilly San Diego. Tom Kirkland and Blaine Fowler happy to be bringing you the only Mountain West Conference game on the schedule. Aztecs and Cougars, San Diego State up seven as we start the second quarter with a pump. And it's a fake or is it a, just a busted play? A little flip out there. Almost intercepted, but bottom line, Cougar ball. Chip Nelson making the play. Big turnover for BYU. Boy, and I couldn't tell if that was a called play. It sure didn't look like it was very well designed. And BYU was, and you see Tom Kraft upset with the quarterback. BYU came for a block that time. They came after it, and it looked, he pulled that back thinking it was going to be blocked and then tried to make a play. And uh, Kraft was yelling at him, but San Diego State created a big play for themselves on defense, and now BYU has created a big play on special teams. He thought that was going to be blocked, pulled it back, called the fire drill, and then tried to get it out for a first down, but a big turnover, and BYU in good field position. He almost made something out of that, but Kip Nelson alertly knocked it away, and BYU's in business. They'll try Brathwaite picking his way around. Down near the 35. Short game. Matt McCoy and Brooke Miller combining to make the play. Let's look at the numbers through the first quarter presented by Delta Airlines. Blaine, what do you see there? Well, rushing yards exactly even. That doesn't support both of these teams difficult to run the football against. San Diego State 71 yards passing, coming almost all on one play, a big play. And uh, not surprising. Look at the first downs. BYU had the one drive where they methodically moved it down. 0 for 3 on third downs continues to be a problem for San Diego State offensively, yet they're ahead 14-7 because of a big play on offense and a great play on defense. And there's a man wide open down the sideline. Fahutani, touchdown! A slow developing play, and Beck had time and put it right there for Tahi. 35-yard touchdown. Boy, and we have seen a couple of great throws tonight. We saw Adam Hall's great post. Going to fake the reverse, and that holds the defense. And watch Beck stand up a little bit wobbly, but right on the money to Fahutahi, who came out of the backfield and was running up the sideline on an out-and-up route. 
A perfect throw with great touch by John Beck. You beat Josh Dean, defensive back locked up there. Matt Payne punches through the extra point, and just like that, you know, we promised you a defensive battle, and we're, we're back to the old days of the Aztecs and the Cougars lighting up the scoreboard. Plenty to cheer about here. We're tied at 14. A strong man, a hunter, a soldier, a weekend warrior. Part of an elite group of adventurers thrown together in the Canadian wilderness. You guys are putting us. Scoring summaries brought to you by AT&T Wireless and Franklin Covey. Come see the Palm Tungsten W by AT&T Wireless at Franklin Covey location. John Beck, 7 for 10. 95 yards. He has a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown. Fahu Tai, very happy to haul that one in. Puts it in play. Ball on the ground. Aztecs across the 20 yard line and just shy of the 25, and that's where Adam Hall takes charge. Well, let's take a look at that okay. touchdown again. They're going to fake the dive to Brathwaite, fake the reverse to Stancil, and then Beck buys himself some time by stepping up in the pocket. He actually delivered that moving forward, and it had perfect touch on it. And Fahu Tahi hauled it in for the touchdown. This has been a game of big plays. Nothing but big plays. BYU did have the one drive, but San Diego State answered with that long touchdown post. BYU comes back in two plays and gets on the scoreboard. This looks like old days. It sure does. John Beck. You know, he does what you're not, you're not supposed to throw off one foot, but he put it right there. We'll try Hamilton again across the 25, and you see nine Cougars in on the stop. Aaron Francisco right in the middle of it. And you see David Nixon getting up off the pile. Starting at linebacker for Levi Madrieta, who's out with a foot injury. Well, they're very excited about David Nixon. He has great speed. He's a true freshman. He grew up right in the shadows of uh, Texas A&M, down in the heart of Texas. And Texas A&M recruited him, along with all the Big 12 schools in BYU. And he decided to take his skills up north. And with Bronco Mendenhall and Gary Cohen are glad he did. Lots of pressure coming. A little flip out to Webb, looking for some running room. He's across the 30. And out near the 35-yard line, very close to first down yardage. Chip Nelson on the coverage. Well, in San Diego State, they will screen, bubble screen, slip screen, swing screen you to death. And they've done even more of it in the last couple of weeks with, uh, uh, with Adam Hall out. They, with Dugalaki not, knowing the, Dugalaki not knowing the offense as well, they've gone almost exclusively to that kind of offense. Adam Hall, they'll throw the ball downfield more, but they'll give you a steady diet of quick screens, and that's why. We have yet to see the no huddle, which they've been working on with Adam Hall. They work prone to go with it with Dugalecki because of the reasons you stated. He'll try Hamilton and uh, plows close to the first down. I think he has it. We uh, had a chance to talk to Gary Crutton uh, this week, and you know he has a lot of thoughts about San Diego State. He loves what Tom Kraft is doing here. Well, their style of football, their receivers will always be up there as the top, close to the top in the conference because the way they throw those screens and they throw the quicks out there to those guys. And uh, Coach Kraft does a great job, and, and he, he's, he's moving in the right direction. And so is Lionel Hamilton moving in the direction of another first down, David Nixon. Coming up to stop him after a pickup of about eight yards. He's running free so far. Oh, he's doing a good job. And, and that adds so much to the San Diego State offense because they're going to spread you out, go single back. And if they've got legitimate running threat, which they do this year, it makes all those quick screens and throws even that more effective. Eight carries, 45 yards for the true freshman. Second and two. Here comes a little... Inside screen, and there's running room. First down pickup. Kobe Bachwald making the stop for the Cougars. And Wesley Williams on the receipt of that pass. And boy, when you're a receiver, this is just a little bit scary, because look what you're doing. You're coming right back against the defense, and you're hoping as you're going sideways, you don't run right into a linebacker head on. That time, it took a glancing blow from Colby Buckwald, but uh, you, can, you can run into yeah. some big boys coming back inside there. There's a risk-reward for your wideouts there. 
you may go to the house or you, you may get knocked out. Well, that one was good enough for a first down, and so San Diego State moves the chains. Matt Perry wondering when he'll get back. Hamilton looking for some running room. Runs over some people. We saw a little bit of the power there. He bounced off a couple of big guys before Gennaro Guilford came up to finally bring him down. Well, he does not look like a true freshman. He runs with a lot of power. He's got good vision. Take a look. Look at the pancake block, the double team on Nixon. And then Francisco ducks underneath. He bounced, he bounced, bounced right off that time of C.J. Ayu's come from the inside. Watch, Ayu makes the hit but doesn't wrap up. And then look at the balance in Hamilton. And then, of course, a host of Cougars come. No gain on the play, a lot of action. Hamilton took about five hits on the play and didn't get a yard. Oh, plenty of time. Great protection going down the sideline. And the crowd wants a flag, but Chad Barney in good coverage. Once again, they were trying Jeff Webb there. And you know what? You hear the crowd who, there's no such penalty as face guarding. And everybody thinks if a guy doesn't look back for the ball that it's a penalty. As long as you don't touch the receiver, you can run and not look back. There's pass interference. Now, let's see if he gets his hands. He's got a hand out there. It comes after the ball comes in. They won't call face guarding as long as you don't make contact with the receiver. They'll call pass interference. If he, let's see if he has contact. If he has a hand up. Looked like a pretty clean play that time. Working against Chad Barney, who was beat on the previous long post. When Adam Hall looks like he's got that uh, arm oiled up yeah. and cranking. He's throwing it well deep. One for four on third downs. Tom Kraft looking for a long one here. Third and 11. All in trouble and down. For the quarter meeting of the quarterbacks, Casey Bills as his second sack, although he had a lot of help there, Blaine. Well, and BYU crossed the linebackers. You saw they took the outside Casey Bills and brought him to the inside, crossed him with David Nixon. They also brought John Burbage from the safety, and that just confused the offensive front for San Diego State, and Casey Bills came free. CJ IU again in on that play, and once again, Seth Santoro, last time out, he didn't even get the kickoff. Puts this one high, not very long. And it's down. He's got a loose ball. It's a loose ball. And there go the Aztecs. And the umpire standing on the 25-yard uh, line whistling. I'll be interested to see what happens here. If it hit a BYU player, it's a live ball. If it hit an Aztec player, it's down right where it hit the Aztec player. Now they're talking Let's about it. Let's see what they sort out here. See what Terry Layden decides. Looked like the first one to touch it with him. It was an Aztec. Yeah, if it hit an Aztec player, you can take it first touch, and you can take yeah. it right there. Yeah. Uh, if it hit a BYU player first, yep. then That's it's 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 uh, going to be Aztec ball, and they can advance it. So it'll be a matter of of where the ball was hit. Now, the other thing is, is you can't advance a muff. So if it was fumbled by a BYU player, you can't pick it up and run it for a touchdown. It's your ball right there. So let's see what the officials sort out here. I believe they were saying the first one to touch it was black. Terry will make it all make sense for us. The ball was illegally touched by the kicking team at the 24-yard line. First down, BYU. So first touching was San Diego State. The ball was kicked. Now take a look. Let's see who it hits. See if, yeah, they got it right. It hit. It hit right on the back of the cover team. And was it Celeste? I think it was. Hubert Celeste, who who uh, it hit in the back that time, and the officials got that one correct. That ball was so high, yep. it actually, from where we're sitting, went above the lights in the stadium. And this is one of the tallest stadiums in the conference, and that thing hung up forever, but nobody knew where it was. <laughs> it's lucky it didn't burn up on re-entry. will try Back on the little fake. He's across the 40, and he's rock ball on the ground. Aztec ball. <laughs> Jeff Schott covers it at the end. Take us through it, Blaine. They're going to fake the draw trap, and then Beck's off and running. He's got that ball on the defensive side. A running back would put that in the left hand, and he gets rocked that time by Underwood. 
and the ball comes out and Beck he, against USC got knocked out of the game with a concussion and he needs to learn when you get down the field you get as much as you can get and then you get down two turnovers now for John Beck he's played a tremendous game at times but he's cost his team twice with turnovers a fumble that turned into a touchdown and now here a fumble after a big play Arm Underwood let him up and Jeff Schott recovered it and here's Adam Hall in business in Cougar territory he's going back to pass and he's under the gun Bockwall brings him down That quiet at this place in a hurry. Boy, and San Diego State trying to get the ball deep again. They've seen something they think they can get it over the top, but you've got to protect the quarterback. You've got to have time to get those receivers up the field. And BYU bringing a variety of blitzes. Colby Buckwalt, the senior from Northridge High School, Sunset, Utah, came around the corner, and he has legitimate sprinter speed. It's been clocked at 4-5 in the 40, which is tremendous for a linebacker. When he comes around the corner, he's going to run your quarterback down. The second down Cougars came in with just 11 sacks, which is low for what yeah, they expect. But the last two plays, two sacks, and they've set the Aztecs back 19 yards. Adam Hall trying to figure out what happened on that play. We're all tied up here as the offense is trying to get loose, but the defense is are raising a welt. It is fourth down the pants. Catch Jim Furyk in the PGA Tour's best this season on ABC. Tomorrow's special is going to be vegetarian lasagna. But since spaghetti with marinara sauce was served today, the staff did not feel it was appropriate to have two Italian dishes in a row. Therefore, the new special is shepherd's pie. And lentil soup. Dodge and Sports West are teaming up to give you a chance to win a 2004 Dodge Ram truck. Simply go to sportswest.tv and click on the picture of the Ram truck for entry instructions and contest rules. The winner will be announced at the end of the basketball season in March. Log on to sportswest.tv and enter now for your chance to win a 2004 Dodge Ram from Sports West and Dodge. Grab life by the horns. Blaine, you'd look good in that, but you're, you're, you're not eligible. I know. I enter every year and they throw it out. Do that? Yeah. You try to sneak it in under an assumed name? Yep. They know my handwriting. On the internet. Ball back in. Quick slam. Four or five Cougars wrap up Jeff Webb. Let's take a look at what happened to Hall. It's his left hand. Well, you take, he called that time and he went over and you see him looking at that finger. I don't know if he just got a cut on it or what happened, but he was holding it there and the trainer getting the, the tape out. It's like, okay, let's put a little tape on that. Everything will be fine. So he's back out on the field after the timeout. A smart throw that time. BYU's been coming after him on the straight drop back stuff. He just takes a quick drop that time and throws the quick slant. You get it off before that defense has a chance to get to your quarterback and get yourself in a makeable third down situation. With a little screen and it's read perfectly. That's Brady Papinga. Last year, first team All Mountain West Conference. First time we've called his name. He sniffed it out and went up and made the play. Boy, San Diego State let everybody come on the blitz because they had that slip screen, but Brady Papinga is playing and he drops off. Drops off, and sometimes they use him in that four man front as an outside linebacker. And look at him run to the football. Well, he runs as good as any defensive end in the country. It's a luxury because they can drop him into coverage, they can play him at linebacker, and uh, he is a fierce competitor. Yet another punt for Seth Santoro. It up nicely. Toby Christensen's going to let it go, and where will they down it? They'll let it roll. How about the four yard line? Well, the dark side defense goes to work right there. So does John Beck. 42 yard punt. And I wonder if Coach Croton told John, when you're out in the in the free running lane there, picked up 21 yards, but you got to get down or get out of bounds. You can't take on these safeties. No, you can't take on safeties or linebackers. And he's got to get down. He's got to get the ball in the other hand or get out of bounds. And what a great punt at that time. Right down in. It wasn't down there. It stopped there. Nearly 
finally time to hit the slopes and Alta is for skiers right now log on to sportswest.tv and enter to win two all-day ski passes at one of the nation's premier resorts Alta back to Brathwaite he has some room he's picking him up and putting him down he's gonna go no flags 95 yards for a touchdown right up the middle Boy, and you saw that he is just flat out fast he just ran away from everyone came in the middle and when you blitz and when you come hard if you break through that initial line of defense there's nobody there now there's jeff Schultz. jeff Schultz has good speed and brathwaite just runs away from jeff Schultz. he has sprinter speed and he didn't even run out of gas yeah, that time. Yeah, we saw him at New Mexico. He went 89 on a cutback, but ran out of gas inside the five. Matt Payne pounds the extra point through, and BYU str struggling scoring points. Ray Brathwaite celebrating his return to the San Diego area. Fans are happy, at least the Cougars. Five carries, 99 yards, and a touchdown for that man. As a former Florida State halfback, ESPN Classic thought I'd be the perfect host for real classics. They knew I had all the moves to present semi-tough, the long shard, and even great sports movies I didn't star in. Okay, here's the play. Eight o'clock, Sunday night, ESPN Classic. You stop at the couch, and the best sports movies of all time will be right there. Real Classics with Burt Reynolds. Where sports and movies collide. Listen up! Television's toughest hour is a hit. Critics call Playmakers powerfully addictive. It's on now. Incredibly stark and uncompromising. That's what I'm talking about! You might not have the will to take your eyes off it. I will snap you at the knees. Great fun to watch. Searingly unflinching. You cheated! ESPN scores. The best 60 minutes of the year! Playmakers, the hit series continues. Tuesday, 9 p.m. on ESPN. Those games yeah. that we see Oklahoma's defense all over the place just dominate. They well, they're quick. They're yeah. quick. Hey, they're so much speed. Check this out. You won't go, Chua! We ain't got a minute. You stand, you just saw our team here. Find it out. I thought Coach Stoops was good. When college game day is on campus, you gotta step it up. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, 10 30 Saturday mornings on ESPN. Gennaro Guilford giving props to Ray Brathwaite. Cougars came in averaging 71 yards rushing a game. How about 95 in 12 seconds? He runs a 12 second 95 yard dash. Boy, we've seen a lot of 12 second and 22 second, <laughs> yeah. minute and 43 second drives in this football game. And this is the first time San Diego State has trailed at home this year. And so they're in unfamiliar territory right now. That pain hammering it down. That'll be Kyle Connerly if he takes it out. And he thinks about it, and here he comes. Looking for a seam. And, well, I guess not the best decision. The big play of the quarter, of course, presented by Xbox Live. Here's the Xbox big play, Blaine. Boy, is there any question the big play of this quarter? Just straight up the middle on a lead. And there goes Ray Brathwaite off to the races. And this is a race that Ray Brathwaite's going to win. Boy, what does that do for his per carry average? You know, he came into this game with a, a great per carry average of 5.7 yards a carry, and he's just amazing in this game with that 90-plus yard run. There's John Beck. Makes his life a little easier when he got the running game going. Yeah, Cougars 255 yards of total offense in the first half. San Diego State and Adam Hall just 121. Here goes Hamilton looking for some running run. He's popped. It still gets across the 20. Solid gain. David Nixon, the first to make that crack. Rathway telling freshman Jake Caressa all about it. He didn't see Jake for long because once he had the ball, he was in his rearview mirror. Well, and a guy like Jake's not going to keep up. He's not going to be in that race long. Boy, 14-21. We were talking to a lot of people this week from both sides saying, boy, this could be a low-scoring affair. It could be 
you know, in the teens for both teams. But at the same time, I think both coaches thought that their teams were close. I and mean, we've had a couple of quick play touchdowns. That's true. And a defensive touchdown always adds to it. As Hamilton crosses, I believe, first down yardage up out near the 30. Daniel Marquardt making the play along with Justin Carlson and Maddox. Maybe just shy. Well, you see Mike Tanner back in the football game for BYU, their middle linebacker. You remember earlier in the game, he was on the sideline, had the tape cut off, and they were checking that ankle out, and then they got him retaped, and he's back in the game. He's second on this Cougar defense and tackles with 32. There was, with Brathway's 95 yard blast, he sort of stole on the thunder from. Lionel Hamilton, but Lionel still putting up solid numbers. 11 carries, 55 yards for Tom Kraft. They need balance. John Beck, he's had a little, mostly good, but he's put the ball on the ground a couple times, too. And you're going to get that from a very talented, but still a true freshman. One for BYU, San Diego State running the football, but then every few plays, they're testing that Cougar secondary deep. And when Adam Hall's had time, he's been able to get that ball on the mark deep to those speedy wide receivers. Once again, pressure, Hall again, he's gonna test Barney, and Webb beats Barney again. I think the Aztecs think they found a matchup they like, Wayne. Boy, and Jeff Webb with outstanding speed on the outside. Take a look. He's the outside guy. This is just a go route, and Chad Barney actually not in bad position, but never makes any attempt to look back for the football. And uh, if you've got the guy on your hip, you've got to look back and get a hand up. And Barney just looking to try to let Webb catch the football and then strip through his hands. Didn't get a good strip there. And Webb, uh, they're like, you're, you're right, Tom. They're liking that matchup on the outside. Chad Barney against Webb. 42 yards on that one. They've already turned Gary Croton and his Cougars for a 70-yard touchdown. There's the toss to Hamilton looking for running run. There's not much there, but he's weaving. And plows ahead for maybe three when they didn't look like there was much. John Denny, first time we've called John's name, the 6'6 junior from Thornton, Colorado. That the Hamilton used the bob and weave that time to get yardage on a play that looked like it was closed down for a loss. Ray Brathwaite's 95-yard dash, as you might imagine, the longest rushing touchdown in all of the annals of BYU football. You'd think maybe Luke Staley would have had one that long, but not close. A lot of formations from San Diego State. They've got trips to the left this side this time and a tight end on the right. All the time again. And there's the flag. It took a while, but Kip Nelson will be flagged. Trying to stay with Wes Williams. Well, and that was a, that was a ball. That ball wasn't real well thrown that time. That ball thrown out to the outside. Wes Williams working on Kip Nielsen this time. Take a look. And Nielsen, Nielsen had his hands on him, and it was Defense. the field judge who threw the flag. You saw Nielsen automatic first down. looking inside. They'll let contact go if both players are going for the football, but if you don't make a, a play like you're going for the football and there's contact, they'll usually throw that flag. And that time, Nielsen was looking at the receiver, had his hands on the receiver. Cougars came in with 48 penalties, by far and away the most in the Mountain West Conference, and that's their second tonight. One each way, I'm not told. One each way on that. Pretty clean game. Late first half, just two flags. We like that. Boy, San Diego State in this drive is just taking the bombs away and attitude here. Yeah, I guess I brought on those flags. <laughs> yep. As soon as you start bragging about a clean game, they're going to start throwing. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five yard penalty, it remains first down. Certainly, Aztec football, they talk about on, the Red and Black is back. A lot of confidence in what they're doing now and, and really what Tom Kraft will do here in the near future. Man who is, is Red and Black through and through. Captain, quarterback, wife's an Aztec. 
but he's made it a point of bringing back the tradition here in many ways. First and 15, they'll try Hamilton left side looking for some blocks, and he's dragged down. Great play by Mike Tanner, the middle linebacker. Tough to catch that man from behind, but Tanner, great pursuit, great lateral movement there. Take a look, and BYU just working down the line of scrimmage, pulling two linemen out in front of Hamilton. And Mike Tanner working from that middle linebacker position, scraping all the way across until he had the angle on Lionel Hamilton to make the tackle. But look at the inside of a lot of the players' arms. All uh, look like little nicks and cuts all over the inside of the arms. That's from that dirt infield. Second and big. All the time. Testing the back. It's caught, but well out of bounds. Gennaro Guilford doesn't mind telling Jeff Webb about it. But who, again, is open behind the defense yep. is Jeff Webb having a huge night. He's number one on this team in receptions. He has 21 coming into the game for 155 yards. And tonight, five for 128. He's been the deep man and the touchdown. Well, he's a big target out there at 6'2 and 200 pounds, and he's absolutely shown that he can run by people tonight. Played all 11 games as a freshman, but that was two years ago. Jeff redshirted last year. His first chance to really work without a ball now. There's some whistles and bodies flying, and Talking, kind of a mess there. Yeah, they blew that one dead before it got going. Prior to the snap, ball starts, offense. Five yard penalty, it remains third down. Well, and San Diego State trying to throw another quick screen, a slip screen back to the right side, wide receiver screen. They do a great job of that. Good as anybody uh, in the conference at getting those receivers involved in the screen game. Third penalty on the Aztecs for 14 yards. BYU with just one. I mentioned they were far and away the leader in the Mountain West Conference coming in with 48. So they've cleaned things up. Yeah, they'll reach into their bag of tricks for a third and 19 play. Trips right. Over the middle. Webb. Well, I guess he's in the middle of a monster night. He's beating everybody out there. Well, and that time just running the post down the middle of the field. Six receptions now, 151 yards and two touchdowns. He's going on a post, and Guilford just trailed by. Guilford looked like he thought he had help in the middle of the field that time. He didn't climb on top of that post at all. Looked like he thought he had help in the middle. And a perfect throw again by Adam Hall. He is right on money on his deep balls tonight. Watch where he puts this ball. He's got the time this time. BYU not coming with a blitz. And look at this strike. Right he, 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 stride he does not look like a guy that's been sitting out for a few weeks. He looks like he's in mid-season form, especially with those deep balls. Between number four and number five for six. And yeah, Jeff Webb, he's hanging some numbers on Bronco Mendenhall's defense, which, you know, as we talked about earlier in the telecast, the Cougars knew that they had talent at the wideout position. They just haven't had a chance to really do much because Adam Hall's been hurt. And clearly, he throws a deep ball very well. Oh, he does. And if he has time. Now, now it's been kind of a cat and mouse game because BYU's had people in his face. Right. But when they've been able to pick those blitzes up, he gets the ball out there. And, and for, for BYU, you have to start to wonder when you need to get some help and play a little zone back there and get some help on those deep guys. But even if you're playing zone, your corners are out there on streaks up the sidelines. They still have to defend on their own, even in zone. J.C. Mahan putting the ball in play here. Stancil and Cooper back for the Cougars. It'll be Brett Cooper. He has big speed. Across the 35, a 33-yard return. So BYU really has had excellent special teams in the in the kick return game. So they have. They've given their offense good field position. You take a look at the scoring drive. 
without great field position. Seven plays, 83 yards, 329. It was bombs away, and Webb led the way on the outside as Adam Hall really on target tonight, hitting his big wide receiver. See what John Beck and company can do for an answer. He's under pressure, gets away as we've seen him do so often. Fires it out and has Chris Hale in Aztec territory. Jacob Elamimian on the defense there. Well, Chris Hale did a nice job. He was working himself deep, and when he saw his quarterback in trouble, he's the guy suddenly he came back to the quarterback and gave him a target. You see him working his way back down the sideline. And so when Beck was in trouble, he moved to the outside, kept his head downfield. And his receiver came to the rescue, Chris Hale on the sideline. 17th reception of the season for Hale, the son of BYU Athletic Director Val Hale. Beck comes it out there and has his man inside the 40 now. Of course, you heard of Aaron Coriel with what he did with the San Diego Chargers. Well, a lot of it happened here with the San Diego State Aztecs. And Don Coriel will be honored here at halftime. Look at those numbers. Well, one of the great offensive lines of all time in both college and the professional game. And well-deserved honor here at Qualcomm Stadium at halftime for Don Coriel. John Beck, 9 of 16. 9 of 12 for 116 yards and a touchdown, and there's another one. Make that 10 of 13 now for 124 yards. Finds Chris Hale again. Well, it looks like Gary Crookman has emptied out the bag offensively tonight. He's uh, moving the quarterback around, running the ball. We've seen inside reverses, outside reverses, fake reverse passes, and uh, it just looks like he's given the, all of the keys to the offense to John Beck in his second start. Well, the sense has been from everyone around the Cougar football program. The last two weeks of practice have been really solid. They didn't, they didn't play well at, against Air Force, but they were feeling like they were about to explode, and it's happening tonight. Here comes the reverse, Pendleton, quarterback, back for Beck. And it should have been picked off. Very well scouted, Jeff showed all over that play. Show played it perfectly. You, you bet when San Diego State sees number 18 on the field, former quarterback Lance Pendleton, the, the secondary's making this. So watch Show come over and make that play. A great read by Show. Should have been an interception for Show, but the ball was underthrown but broke on the football, and that reverse pass didn't fool the San Diego State defense. Great recognition by Tom Kamar's team. Second and 10 now. Ticking down near halftime. Very entertaining first half of football. Unless your defensive coordinator. There goes Beck again. Weaving his way to about the 25. Brandon Rager making the play from his defensive end spot. But, and when Brathwaite's having the success running the ball that he is, that makes that play work well because you've got to cut down the cutback lane. So here's Brathwaite. Everybody's trying to get to Brathwaite because he's so good at getting to the hole or cutting back. And that hesitation leaves a seam for John Beck as he picks up five yards on second down. Big 62, Brandon Stevens with a block in there. Beck has rushed seven times for 27 yards and a touchdown. He's also fumbled twice. One was, was on a blitz where he didn't really have an option there. There goes Thomas Stancil. They've worked him in near first down yardage. Kirk Morrison smelling that play out. That's going to be fourth down and short, and this certainly is well within the range of Matt Payne, BYU's fine kicker. 13 of 16 last year, 6 of 8 this year, including 2 at USC, 52 and 53. This will be a 39-yarder. Normally automatic for this guy. And chalk up another three. So the Cougars retake the lead 24 21. Sports West is your source for sports on the internet. Find the latest information on schedules and upcoming telecasts. And be sure to enter to win exciting prizes, tickets, and special promotions from these featured sponsors. Log on now at sportswest.tv, powered by I4 Solutions. 
24-21. And uh, at this point, you know, the defense has made big plays on both sides, but the offenses so far are, are dominating. Seven plays, 44 yards, ending in a 39-yard field goal for Gary Croton. You look at the BYU's slow start this year. They scored 76 points total in the first five games. That's the lowest since 1970. And, and you know, they had Matt Berry coming back, who kind of took over the keys last year in BYU's offense as the quarterback, and they felt like they were really starting to make progress. He goes down with that broken hand to start all over again with John Beck. And now Beck looks like he's coming into his own, and the uh, offense moving the football tonight. Don't forget Marcus Whalen uh, suffered a fracture of his foot in warm-ups before the first game. He missed a few games, and then Scott Jackson, their all-conference center, missed a game, slowed with a knee injury. The Aztecs return it across the 20-yard line, 19-yard return. Jason Pham from the whole Justin Jory making that stop. There's the scoring drive as you see Robbie Bosco, the offensive coordinator, talking it over with John Beck. There's a little bit of knowledge in Robbie's head. Well, he's been there in this stadium oh, yeah. many a time. Took uh, the BYU Cougars to a national championship in the holiday bowl. Michigan in this very state. Should have come back for that one. Yeah. We're almost in the huddle there. We could listen right in there. Minute and a half to go. All on a little delayed handoff, and that fools nobody. Mike Tanner was right there. Well, BYU going to take a quick timeout. Thinking that uh, if they can uh, get the, full the football back the way they've been moving the football offensively, they have a chance for more points. I don't know San Diego State's been moving the football effectively yep. as well, but it's been via the big play where BYU seems to be in high gear offensively. They're moving the ball methodically down the field. Tom Kraft remembers last year's game against BYU, feeling they were physically manhandled. Adam Hall sacked five times. Well, here, we'll let him talk about it. We felt uh, when we, we played them last year, when we were in first place in 3-0, and uh, coming out of that game after our loss, that they were one of the best teams, and I still believe that uh, after we finished the year, uh, that they were one of the best teams in the league. Aztecs scored just 10 points that week, and then they went down to Albuquerque and scored eight points against Bronco Mendenhall's defense. And Mendenhall's defense back then held them to just 183 total yards. So in speaking to Bronco, he felt like he had a feel for what the Aztecs do, but, but they have so much talent that sometimes they're going to make plays, and we've seen that a lot in the first half. So what do you do if, you, if you're Tom Craft right here? Do you say, okay, if they're going to call timeout, I'm going back up top again. And all has time, little out route, and uh, a little bit too far out. Nice catch made by Jermaine Moore. Inside the numbers, Lionel Jackson, Hamilton, half of his 14 Jermaine rushes Moore. have gone for two yards or less. So he's had some running room against Broncos boys, but the they've been on him pretty well. Well, take a look. He goes up after it and is just, you have to get one foot down in college is all, and that one was just on the line. Take a look again. Right there, he's just outside the line with that right foot, very close. A nice route. They've been going deep, going deep. Now they've got that secondary on their heels, turning and running, open those hips sooner. They break it to the out, and you get a guy wide open underneath. Trips left, and a big third and 14. All under pressure as you see him. Ball on the ground. Cougars lose it, and they have it. Buckwell, touchdown. celebration rule. They let BYU have a little party in the end zone there. Well, a play for the defense. Well, take a look because Adam Hall does not feel the backside pressure. And this is James Allen coming, and he stripped that purposely. He saw the ball up there, took the right hand, and stripped the ball away. Buckwald's going to pick it up and get into the end zone. And so now both defenses with a score in this football game. Just like that, the Cougars tack on Tate, uh, 10 late first half points. 
Matt Payne hammers it through, and it's a 31 to 21 lead for BYU, and they are getting it together offensively and defensively. Boy, take a look. Backside, Hall thinks he's got time, doesn't feel that pressure, and he has that ball out, doesn't have it tucked away, trying to go down the field with a pass. And boy, for BYU, they're fortunate that when the ball was dropped back on the turf, Colby Buckwell was there to pick it up. Take a look. Backside, James Allen with the strip. And then uh, picked up. Casey Bills looks like he put it on Picked the up and then fumbled. And Colby Buckwell was there for the, for the lucky bounce. And James Allen, what a heads-up play on the strip yep. by James Allen. He saw the football out there, secured the tackle with his left hand, and then tore it out with the right. And I applaud the officials for letting the college kids have a little fun on a big play. We've oh, talked about it over the years. Yeah, as long as they don't draw attention to themselves. That was a team celebration. Yeah. That should be allowed. Then. And uh, we had dinner with the officiating crew. We did a game down in Albuquerque a few weeks ago. And they told us that they're trying to lay off on that a little bit. If they can get to a player and stop them from doing it, they're going to try to do it. And they let BYU celebrate as a team. And there's nothing wrong with that. Directly off turnovers right there. Adam Hall, welcome back to college football. It's been uh, the agony and the ecstasy. He's had some great throws, but he's had some problems, too. Payne hammers a little low liner. And it's scooped up. From the five-yard line for the Aztecs, number 33, Aztecs will operate with not much time left short of the 25-yard line. Well, and again, now you got 102. Do, do you go and try to grab some more momentum and throw the ball up the field and try to get some momentum back offensively? Or do you, are you content to just run the football here? Well, and the way, you know, the way San Diego State's throwing the ball deep, I would think BYU would be sitting very deep in their coverage right now and not let anybody run by defensively. See what Hall can do here. Under the gun again. Little out route. And he doesn't get out of bounds. Wes Williams needed to get out of bounds. Coaches wanted him to get out of bounds, but clock continues to roll. Well, they ran an out route, well thrown ball, but you gotta, you gotta know how much time's on the clock, and, and you gotta get out of bounds that time. Williams did not do that. They're very comfortable in this no huddle. Trips right. 30 seconds to go. Cougars continue to come. A little gun route. And it's hauled in by who else? Jeff Webb. Approaching 200 yards and receiving in the first half. What an unbelievable game he is having. And, and there have been some great throws by Adam Hall. That throw out in front, and Webb makes a great yep. catch. Watch him go out after the thing. That ball was just in between the safety and the corner and thrown out in front and low. And watch Webb go out and get this football. And, he, and he's thinking he's going to get oh, hit yeah. there, too, and he makes a great catch. He is having a career night tonight. Adam Hall trying to bounce back from that strip and Cougar touchdown. They're almost in position for J.C. Mejia. He's 8 for 9, but he's 8 for 8 inside the 50. So they're a couple of plays and maybe 20 yards from having a good shot. Well, and, and the way Adam Hall's throwing the deep ball, they're, they're in range of Adam Hall throwing it into the end zone to Webb right now. Webb 7 for 178 and two touchdowns. Well, you mentioned earlier, Tom, Bronco Mendenhall, BYU's defensive coordinator, saying, well, he looks at San Diego State's receivers on film and he sees tremendous speed and he sees talent and they've just not been able to get them the football. Adam Hall is back. Yep. And he's getting the ball out there. When he has time. The Cougars have pressured him. It's not been so much fun for him. And here they come again. Around the side. Lobs it out there. Another first down at the 30. Jermaine Moore. It's complete number one. 20 Moore. seconds. Only six seconds go down. 17-yard pickup. And out of bounds. It stops the clock. Adam Hall did a nice job. He worked his way away from the blitz. The blitz was coming off of his right. See it coming from the right. James Allen, this time Hall moves a little bit to the left, buys himself some time, and makes a nice throw moving to his left to Moore on the sideline. John Burbage, close but not close enough. 21 seconds left. And, and really in long field goal range already. Look at that. 
solid game. And it's only a half. Cougars drop more in coverage. There's Webb again, and he almost made it a hat trick. Gennaro Guilford all over him there near the goalpost. Well, and you know what? Guilford was in good position. And when the ball went in the air, all the great receivers have an extra gear. Now, you watch 19 here. You watch Webb. Guilford's in good position. And watch when the ball goes in the air. Look at him pull away. He just pulls away and almost comes up with a great catch. He has that fifth gear yep. that good receivers have. He probably thinks he should have had it. I believe the Cougars have called timeout now. Bronco Mendenhall in with his defense. Interesting in our discussions with Bronco yesterday. Levi Madriette is injured, and, and he has a rule. If you don't make Thursday's practice, you, you don't play. And that meant he wasn't going to travel. But on our flight down, we saw Levi Madrietta on the flight. So I asked him, what's up with that? He didn't know. He, he, he got this broad grin and said, he's down here? And that kind of speaks to the kind of team players he's trying to develop there. Right, he made his own way down. Yeah, he did. Because he wanted to be here and support his teammates, and the Bronco Mendenhall liked that. Yeah. It's funny, I asked him, you know, do you like the game prep or, or do you really like to be in the game and matching wits with the offensive coordinator from the other side? And he, he said, no, really, the games, it, he enjoyed the week and he enjoys developing the players during the week. And I found that interesting for a guy who's done a great job wherever he's been with defenses and he's put up great defensive numbers. He doesn't care about that. He, he's more concerned with developing the character and, and the, the team mentality. movement on the offensive line that time before the snap and, and you don't want to do anything to take yourself further back in field goal range here false start offense five yard penalty remains second down take a look on the left side just a little bit early that time on the left side the right side of the offensive line Sykes the right guard your left as you were looking at it on television Fourth penalty for San Diego State. Cougars have three. Jasper Harvey, big center. Ball trips right again. Cougars bringing people, ball rolling. They'll try the end zone. And he had a man open briefly, but Guilford closed nicely and denied the touchdown. Well, and Guilford found the football, and uh, Williams went and curled back around. He's running the corner. And when Hall flushed out, now take a look, watch on the outside. He's going on a street, going to the back corner of the end zone, and Guilford loses track. But when he comes back, he keeps his head up and finds the football and is able to get his hands on the football. He was open by quite a bit yeah. if Hall had noticed it earlier. Well, the problem was Hall was flushing to the right out of the pocket when Wesley Williams first broke free. By the time he found him, it gave uh, the corner, Gennaro Guilford, time to break back to the receiver. At this point, it'd be about a 52-yard field goal. Hall will try to get out there. Webb makes a move. And they'll keep the clock rolling, and it's not a first down. And that's the half. So it looked like Webb had a chance to scamper out of bounds. Timeout. San Diego State. But they got the timeout, even though there's zeros on the clock. In the half. And, and the official says there were three okay. seconds remaining when the timeout was called. I'm glad Terry Layden uh, clarified that because there were right. the, goose eggs And the there. game clock we see up here, you know, being run by up here, he looked up at the clock to see what it was when he waved his hands for the timeout and saw three seconds up there. And so even though it clicked off because of the slow reaction of the timekeeper, yep. the referee knew what was left on the clock and put three seconds. So. Put San Diego State in field goal range. Good piece of officiating there by that crew. Not a lot of flags, and they've let, let some of the enjoyment of the game go on here. So I'd say all in all, Terry Layden's guys have done a solid job in the first half. Uh, and they've had to cover a lot of ground. It's been some big plays. We've yeah, been going when, up and down like a hockey game. You, know, you think about it, when, when a, a streak is thrown or a deep post, a big play happens. Those officials have to run oh, yeah. with the play. They run down the field. So when a... Ray Brathwaite goes 90-plus yards for a touchdown. Some officials running about 60 of it with him. See Mejia's numbers. 
solid inside 50, perfect eight for eight. Two very good place kickers in this football game. This will be a 39-yarder. What a story he is. Last two years, he watched practice from right next door and thought he was better than the kickers and wanted to get on, and, and it took a while for them to believe in him. And even this year, they had a an All-American JC kicker this coming in who couldn't qualify final. academically. Cougars call timeout. And finally, they gave Mejia a chance, and he's been excellent. The senior walk-on. Transferred from Hartnell Community College in Salinas a couple years ago. Talked about watching practice from a stairway in a parking garage adjacent to the practice field. And they just, you know, he'd go up to him and he even tried coming out early before practice and kicking, hoping someone would Somebody see that he could kick. Hey, look how hard I can yeah, hit the ball. Right. And uh, it took a while, but perseverance pays off. Well, and Tom Kraft is an advocate of the walk-on. Yep. He, he believes that a walk-on, there's a great tradition of, of, of walk-ons here at San Diego State. And so he, he definitely is an advocate. If he thinks a guy can play, he gives him every opportunity to play. That's a very proud tradition for walk-ons at San Diego State. Those tech kickers were just 17 of 27 last year. Mahea trying to get to 9 for 10. He hammers it. And it is good. Inside the 50, so Kraft gets something at the end after giving up 10 late points. And the shootout is on. 31-27. Cougars head into the locker room feeling good about themselves. This Sports West College football presentation is brought to you by NordicTrack.com. Life's an adventure. Get ready for it online. The Homestead, an adventurous resort for the mind. Your Lexus dealer and the new 2004 LS, the ultimate expression of their passionate pursuit. And by the Franklin Covey family of products, including Palm and AT&T Wireless. <laughs> 24 Cougars were getting ready to kick off the second half in just a minute. Jeremy Rose. It would be a defensive struggle, huh? Let's look at the quarterback efficiency in the first half brought to you by Palm at Franklin Covey. Check out all the new Palm handheld devices at Franklin Covey stores or by visiting franklincovey.com slash free. All right, take 11 of 14 for back, 134 yards. He's had a couple of big plays, the one touchdown, no interceptions. And for Hall, 12 of 18, 216 yards, two, two TDs, no interceptions. Both guys have put the ball on the ground with fumbles, however. And of those 216 yards, Webb has 186 in receiving yards. That's already 26th best in San Diego State history for a game, and we're at halftime. Yeah, no question about that. I think Bronco Mendenhall and his guys talked about finding number 19 at halftime. Remember, the Aztecs won the toss and deferred, so they get the ball back, and they probably put it on the ground. That was ugly. They'll take over at the 21. We talked about Don Coriel, Air Coriel, and they honored him at halftime. And thank you, Don Coriel. What an incredible run he had here at San Diego State, and of course with the Chargers. Uh, you know, kind of just reinventing the forward pass. He And it's fitting that he's here tonight when they're throwing the ball all over the place. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he's smiling down there watching this offensive fireworks tonight. Great innovator. And a great man as well. Lionel Hamilton plows over the 20. 15 for 55. Josh Brandon coming up to make the play. Hamilton averaging... More than five yards of carry coming in. Hasn't quite hit that number. And, you know, he's kind of had a quiet 55 yards. Well, and he's had a lot, if you think about it, he's had a lot of runs right down in that dirt right there on the <laughs> infield from where the Padres play. This is the last time you'll see dirt in this infield ever. The Padres next should be moving into their new home uh, down in downtown San Diego. So this will be grass. There's Hamilton on a little toss. He's got a lot of running room. 
And Guilford stops him right about midfield. Right, and they're going to tack 15 onto the end of it because Adam Hall got drilled as he let go of that screen. They dropped the flag. It looks like they'll have roughing the passer, and it'll go on to the end of the run. Watch Hall. He buys just enough time to get it off. And then very well set up. You got the big guys out in front. Hamilton gets to the sideline. And finally brought down by Guilford and Aaron Francisco, but that penalty will go on the end. 28 yards plus 15, so 43 yards. Roughing the passer is defense. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. Trying to, trying to knock that guy around and make him a little less efficient. Boy, and look at him as he's, uh, he looks like he's been beat up. He's got the dirt all <laughs> over yeah. him, and he's, he's, uh, he's taking a little bit of a beating. Look at that right side. But he held onto that one just long enough to set up the big play. All now inside Cougar territory. And there goes Franklin as they Try the backup. Josh Brandon sniffs it out. Michael Franklin trying to surprise him. Michael Franklin. Well, we talked about Franklin. He's a good change up. He's got great quickness. Look at the cutback. Finds a cutback lane, but Josh Brandon goes and makes the shoestring tackle. He doesn't make that tackle. That could be touchdown because there's nobody on that backside. Michael Franklin, 5'7, 180 pound sophomore. There's a touchdown this year. Played a lot last year. But Lionel Hamilton, one of the prized recruits of, of what many believe was the best recruiting class in the conference, hauled in by Tom Kraft here at San Diego State. And uh, Hamilton has certainly lived up to his hype coming in. Hamilton out of Edison High School in Stockton, California. He's had 100 yards in three of the five games coming into this one. Three touchdowns, number 12 in the nation in rushing, we mentioned that. But they, uh, they say he's one of the top recruits they've had in the past 15 years here at San Diego State. Very excited to have him. He was a super prep All-American out of high school, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. And well, I've always thought you could recruit to oh, San Diego State. I absolutely. mean, the campus is gorgeous. The city is wonderful, has everything you ever want in the city. We love doing games in this town. We do. And uh, like Tom Kraft, as he gets this thing going, gets it turned around, as he says, I would think that they could uh, be very competitive recruiting the fertile recruiting grounds of Southern California. No question. But if you're from, like, the upper Midwest someplace and it's freezing cold, I don't know why you wouldn't want to come down here. Oh. I'm coming. You offer me full scholarship, I'm coming here to play. Right now, get 50% off planning software when you purchase any handheld device at Franklin Covey. Off the timeout. Hamilton back in the backfield. All looking at a second and eight. And he's trying the sideline again. Picking on Chad Barney. Solid coverage there. Looking for Robert Ortiz. Robert Ortiz. Barney right there step for step in the Barney, first half. Yeah, Barney was right in his hip pocket that time. You see him fake the screen to the sideline, and Barney's out there all by himself. That time he was right on the hip of Ortiz. He looked back for the football, had a little bit of bumping, but we talked about it. If you're looking back and trying to find the ball, they're not going to call that incidental contact. So that was good coverage that time by Chad Barney and Ortiz. And you see the now backup quarterback, Matt Dogalecki, transferred from Illinois, who Led them for the most of the first five games after it all went down. He was bringing people. Aztecs doing a good job. Now he's running out of room and throws it out of bounds. And that's a, that's a good play by the quarterback where he he's going to come out and realize he doesn't have anything open downfield. But rather than take the loss or take another hit, just gets it out of bounds and goes back to the line of scrimmage to play on third down. Big early third down play here. Watch the pickup this time. The BYU's bringing blitz. San Diego State doing a better job of picking up. Mike Tanner was applying the pressure, but that's just a heads-up play by a veteran quarterback. The coverage is good downfield, no place to go with the football, and so he does the wise thing, throw it where nobody can get it, and go back to the line of scrimmage and avoid the loss. It's actually fourth down. And oh, that's right, fourth, my fault. My fault, too. And the referees observe something, and this, is, this could take them out of field goal range. Dead ball, false start, kicking team, five-yard penalty. 
it remains fourth down. Well, Mejia now from 50. He's going to have to back up and see what they can do from 55. Well, and that, you can't afford to do that. You're right on the verge of, of the distance for, for leg strength here yeah. to begin with, and then, then you move him back five. This will be just under 55 yards. Seth Santoro, the punter, is holding. See what he can do. It's blocked. Cougars penetrated and blocked it. And now they'll try to run with it. And there's a handoff, and there goes Aaron Francisco down the sideline. And he's going to try to lateral it around. That may look crazy, but Bronco Mendenhall actually teaches that. Daniel Marquardt busting through, and, and you mentioned the distance, and Mejia had to kick it lower to, to get the leg to power and, and, through. And, and you got pressure right up the middle that time. Marquardt came up the middle, and that's where you can't have pressure on a long kick because you got to hit the ball a little more in the fat of the ball to get that distance. It doesn't get up. You see Francisco, and, and he's, trying, he's trying to give it up that time. Decided that was smart to keep it that time. Well, that's a great play by Tanner. He picks it up, Tanner's and then, got it. Then he, hand, then he does the handoff, and then, and then Francisco almost runs the option. He's looking for someone to pitch to. Well, you know Francisco's going, give me the ball, give yeah. me the ball. Here comes Marcus Whalen. Power guy. Powers over the 45. He was the starter when the season began. We mentioned that in a freak accident, he was stepped on in warm-ups before their opener at home against Georgia Tech, suffered a hairline fracture, and it's taken a long time for him to get back, and they said this week he was finally running with confidence and running hard. Yeah, he looked like the Marcus Whalen of last year, running hard, and, and he's not a, a, a hole picker or a, a glider like Brathwaite. He is a very physical, shoulders down, running forward, downhill type of a running back, and so... They thought he looked full speed this week in practice. Back in trouble. Has some time. Throws it out of bounds. He's, he's got very quick feet. Well, and he had Aztecs draped all over him that time on the blitz and did good to get rid of the football. You know, Adam Hall threw one away on the last drive for San Diego State. The sacks kill drives. It's, it's, it's demoralizing to an offense. And as a quarterback, you've got to figure out a way to get rid of the football. You're better off having a little less in terms of completion percentage and avoid sacks for your offense. And Beck did a good job that time just doing that. Rick Miller almost had him, and then Steven Larson was breathing down his neck. Third and short, plenty of time, right on the button, and it's dropped by Daniel Coach. He threw that right there. Larson on the coverage. Well, and Daniel Coach running an out route. John Beck threw a perfect ball. He got a tremendous amount of velocity on that football. If you don't watch it in, it's going to bounce out. Daniel Coach with a drop. He had first down yardage, and BYU will now punt. Lane, I... I'm not sure I should say this, but this this has a feel of overtime all over it, doesn't it? <laughs> Somewhere in the 50s. Payne trying to get a bounce, and it bounces backward. It's down to, looks like they'll finally put it down now this, this will be the around same, the 27. The same call we had yep. in the first half. Hit a BYU player first, it'll go right where it hit that player. 25-yard punt, not what Matt Payne normally expects. As they figure out where it'll finally be spotted, Adam Hall will bring the red and black out here to try to move down and tie this one up. Terry Layden's listening to the explanation of some of his people there. Pretty easy call. The guy batted it. It's, as you mentioned, yeah, it, hit, same it, hit, it hit the BYU player the same play as when it hit a San Diego State player in the first half, and the receiver sorted that out. You know, he's not allowed to bat it backward. No. And they've worked through that one. Early third quarter. And the Aztecs under Tom Kraft have shown a little bit of everything. They've shown balance. They've, they've run the ball pretty well. And they've had some explosive passing plays. Where they're, they're picking on Chad Barney. And, and early in the... Early in the quarter, we saw Barney make a nice play down the sideline. Well, I'll tell you, the, the one difference I've noticed in this, in that first drive for San Diego State, they did a better job of picking up the blitz in the first half. Let's take a look at this play. See, right, right on top of a BYU oh. player's head. And so the ball's got to go on the 22-yard line. 
Oh, and, and then BYU player that is that 27. So they're, what they're going to do is BYU had the touching, and San Diego State can take it where it was touched first or it was controlled first, or, take, or, or it was touched second, and they're going to take it out on the 27-yard line. That's where they're going to put it. Now, it hit the BYU player on the 22. But then the ball went backwards and was batted from there. I'm just wondering when we'll see the no huddle. Because they, they practice that as an offense, especially now that Hall's back. Well, they'll operate from the 27 now. Ball the pass back. It's popped up in the air. That's a free ball, I believe. And exactly. John Burbage has it. It was a backward pass, and and uh, you you teach your receivers on those screens that whether you think it's forward or backward, if you miss one, you always run and recover it. And that certainly was a backward pass. And, and Jeremy Justice, the tight, or actually that's Wes Williams. Williams, yeah. Yeah, Williams looked like he didn't even know it was a backward pass. You teach your guys to get on that no matter what, and then he realizes that if the official makes the call that he made a mistake. You drop that, you've got to go get it, and Burbage alertly went after the football and makes the big play. So another big defensive play and a mental error for San Diego State offensively. No question about that. Christmas coming early on several occasions here tonight. Right up the gut goes Brathwaite to about the 11. Nice gain there. Ronaldo had a little fat average of 17, more than 17 yards of carry in the first half. Six for 104, including that 95-yard touchdown run. We'll take a look inside. The big boys inside. They, they've got some experience and some youth inside on that offensive line. Scott Jackson is the center. This is experienced and good as any center in the league right in the middle, and he's holding two freshmen on each side. And Otho Mohatal and Jake Caressa at those guards. If they are big, both going over 350 pounds. Beck is going to try it again. He's already scored once on the ground. Close to first down yardage. Kirk Morrison, Brandon Rager on the stop. When Kirk Morrison started out this game, made about every tackle for the first quarter. We, had to, we didn't call his name as much in the second half as BYU started to spread the football around from sideline to sideline. That's the first time we called his name here in the second half. Third and one. These are always crucial, especially in the red zone. Cougars going big with Tahi and Whalen in the backfield for the fake. There's Tahi. Touchdown, Cougars. And that's two for number three tonight. They've obviously seen something. Well, and, scouting. and BYU's been struggling to run the ball on third down, so this time they fake the run and go play action and watch as Tahi's a big load coming out of there. And guys are going to try to tackle him low. He realizes that and just goes up and over the top for the touchdown. Matt Payne hammers it through. Cougars coasting. 38 points. They're up 14. Fahu Tahi. Three catches, 44 yards, two touchdowns. You set, check it, boom! <laughs> I'm here, straight out of your nightmares. <laughs> excuse me? Excuse you nothing, I'll excuse you as soon as we play a little football. You understand me, sweet tooth? You don't play football. <laughs> Every day I do ESPN NFL football with the first person football feature. One and one and wow! Because I don't play, you know something? Uh oh, there you go. The little birdie's talking to me. He's saying, Sap can't mess with you. Sap too slow. Ready D for everyone. Football. They say I look at the ball the way a linebacker looks for a sack. The way a batter looks at a pitch. Wow, they said. You hit that thing just like a puck, Jerry. But I'm from Wisconsin, and I used to play hockey. 
So I take that as a compliment. Watch Jerry Kelly and the PGA Tour's best this season on ABC. Fahu Tahi putting the finishing touches on that little gift touchdown. St. Nick spreading it around here early in the holiday season. Gifts. We added up three gift touchdowns here. And that was one where Williams, that's a backward pass. You've got to go and go cover that. And he acted act like he didn't know it was a backward pass and just let John Burbage get on top. Here's the touchdown. Going to fake on the lead, get the linebackers to step up and then release the back out. And you see Morrison trailing the play, think and run. And then Tahi makes a nice nifty move oh. over the top to get in the end zone, the 234-pounder airborne for the touchdown. Bad hops there for Fahu Tahi. Meantime, we're getting a message from the sidelines that John Beck is hurt, but it doesn't look so bad. And there's, I guess, the active backup right now, Todd Mortensen, who is actually third when Matt Berry's around. So Adam Hall and company in a little bit of a hole. And here comes Hamilton looking for running room, and you see about eight Cougars around the football led by Kobe Bachwald. Their pursuit is the thing that impresses me. It isn't like one or two, but they have people, four and five and six people flying to the ball just for emphasis, even though they're not, not really in on the play. Yeah, and when and it, it gets to be as you're, you're back running against this BYU defense, every time you get up with 10 white shirts standing around you, that gets frustrating. And now San Diego State going that no huddle that you were talking about. Trying to shake things up a little. Trips left. Ball under the gun. Wrapped up and goes down. David Nixon. First collegiate sack for the freshman from College Station, Texas. Well, and BYU brought two backers through the same gap on the inside. And watch, see, they're both there. And then they do a little cross. And, and uh, so they're sending three guys where two guys are coming. The back has got to step up and make the just, block. Hamilton just missed Nixon. Looked like he was trying to decide who he was going to take, and Nixon was by him. Now how about a third and 17? A try to draw, and there's nothing doing as once again David Nixon says, I don't think so. There's Hamilton. 11 of his 17 carries, less than two yards, so they have scouted him well. Boy, and they bring that inside blitz again, and you see Nixon, they love Nixon's speed. Yep. He really gets to the football, and uh, he comes up the middle and just unlocked, and Adam Hall has no place to go with the football. One thing Tom Kraft was talking to us about in our meetings this week, he was concerned, you know, last year BYU physically dominated in Provo, and I think we're seeing it here again tonight. Santaro, another pretty good shot. Kick. Toby Christensen at midfield. A lot going on there, but no fair two to get back in this. Cougars easily within Matt Payne's field goal range. They go double split receivers on both sides. Back alone in the backfield. Here come the Aztecs. The out route can't find David Christensen. What a nice call on third and long. They bring the blitz from the outside. Beck having to throw the football before the break. Watch McCoy coming from the outside. Now Beck's throwing that before the break, just hoping he throws it in the right spot and makes the read. McCoy coming hard, forcing him to give the football up. And so a good call dictated what the offense did on that play. Matt Payne, seven for nine so far this season. This one's from about 47. He hammers it. And it's good. So he continues to put up numbers and be almost automatic. And that one was off the dirt infield. Maybe that's actually a good thing because that, that surface of that dirt is hard and flat. He had a little smile. like He maybe thought he didn't get all of it, but he got enough to drop it through. 47 yards on that one. In the Coliseum at USC, you know, you know we, we know kickers at altitude, he plays in Provo, I and mean, they get a little bit of a rise when they play at home. But on the road at the Coliseum against USC, this young man kicked 53-yard field goal and 52-yard field goal. Oh, he, he has plenty of leg. He's a big guy. You saw him make a, make a tackle early in the game. He hunts people out. Yeah, he, he's, he's, a, he's not the normal mentality yeah, he's for the kickers. last line of defense for, for BYU on the kick, but he's a big last line of defense. Yeah. He'll, he'll lay a hit on you if he gets a chance. 
Boy, and, and, and BYU's defense played well on that last drive, actually making San Diego State back up and punt out of their own end zone. And so the offense enjoyed great field position. Only 19 yards on the drive. San Diego State's defense played well, but 19 is all they needed to get into Matt Payne's field goal range. See back, it looks like he got blood all over the hand. Yep. Freddie Talawakiaho back along with Jason Van. There's the line drive. It's hammered. And he steps out of bounds. So a good kick and Van deciding to try to return it rather than letting it bounce. If it goes out of bounds, they're in great shape. Remember well, and for James for, Allen did this uh, for BYU, went out about the foot line in, in, in a, game, a few weeks back. Yeah, and for, and for San Diego State, they've had some mental mistakes. You know, the mental mistake on the backwards pass, which was a fumble, and uh, turned the ball over to BYU, and now terrible field position for Tom Kraft and for Adam Hall in this offense. Now, they're very successful with, with uh, over-the-top throws in the first half. Let's see if they come out of their own territory, and Adam Hall goes uptown and tries to to find well, Webb again deep on the outside. Well, there's still plenty of time here, but at some point, you you know, they have to think about stops. They're not getting many stops, and they got to put, they got to get seven. They'll try Hamilton near side. Breaks out to the 10 and a little beyond. David Nixon, who is racking up the big plays here. For that last uh, last series for BYU Nixon with a lot of big plays. A true freshman out there playing linebacker for a injured Levi Madrieta. Well, Adam Hall a little more room to work now. Second and short trips left again. Cougars have done a nice job silencing Jeff Webb. And Hall goes down. Boy, and Hall, I mean, he looks like he's beat up. That was John Denny on the sack that time. They brought John Burbage on the outside on a blitz. And uh, and watch the blitz from the outside. See the strong safety blitz come from the outside. That forces Hall to step up because the strong safety's unblocked. And then Denny comes underneath for the sack. Take a look. And Denny comes open late, but but the real force is caused by that blitz and another unblocked man coming from the outside. San Diego State really struggling to protect Adam Hall. With the seventh sack, and no, sir. Sack number seven for a defense that came in with a total of 11 on the season. Brady Papinga picks up another one. He led the Mountain West last year with eight, seven for 32 yards. Boy, and, and for San Diego State, now they've got a punt with a short distance. The punter's going to be standing right on the back line as you see Papinga come underneath again. The pressure coming from behind again on a blitz with a linebacker, forcing Hall up into the pocket, and Papinga is the recipient again. That offensive line has uh, is getting blown apart at this point. Santoro, very little room to maneuver. Toby Christensen should get a great return. Nice kick there. It hangs a while. Christensen from about the 48. The big block there, weaving his way, almost broke through. Still, Cougars in great shape at about the 38-yard line. 46-yard punt from Santoro. That's about as, as uh, a good a spot as they could, could have expected out of there. Yeah, with only a 10-yard um, buffer there to punt the ball from, he did a great job. Cougars taking charge. They're up 17 and threatening. Don Coriel honored at halftime, signing autographs. Having a good time, although he doesn't like the score. He likes all the scoring, but he doesn't like the score. John Beck, meantime, last five possessions, averaging starting at their own 49. And now he's cutting it back with some running room, and he's learned. Well, and, and San Diego State, when he yep. slides like that and gets down, he's sitting on the ground, he's down, and then takes a shot. But, but, but that's the smart play for John Beck. You get what you can get, and you get down, and you, and you live to play on the next play. Yep. After the play was over, personal foul. Offense. A second down after a 15-yard penalty. I mean, I, I, wait a minute. They're going. I don't understand that one at all. Let's take a look now. Oh, I see what they're calling. Oh, right there. They're calling the hit right there. Looks and like Lance you Pendleton know what, I, with the with the late P block. Pendleton had the late block, and they called that. But you also had a yeah, San Diego like, State defender shoving. You, that one probably should have been thrown, and it should have been offsetting 15-yard penalties. But Pendleton took a shot right. late. 
and they throw the flag there, but at the same time, yeah, Matt McCoy. Yeah, McCoy's pushing back in the head. Tapped him in the head. Yeah, so that, that should have been offsetting, but. We'll figure it out as we go on. Beck over the middle has his man in its coats, and that's back-to-back -back drops. Well, and he opened again, and Beck puts the ball right where it needs to be, and Coates has dropped two in a row now on crossing routes. On the coverage for the Aztecs, Drew Well, take a look. He's Beck really throwing the ball well. This one is right on the money. Coates is open, running against Kirk Morrison across the middle, and this is just a drop, and that is two drops in a row. When you drop two in a row, you start to think about it. Yep. You know, and the coach just a young guy. Part of the reason Beck has just won for his last five, third and 21. Well, the Aztec defense sorely needs a, a quick stop and, and get out. There's a little inside handoff to Thomas Stansel, and he's quick. He's smothered after a short pickup. And now Matt Payne will come in and kick. Cancel a nice little addition to the offense. They've worked him in at wide receiver. They've, they've involved him in many ways. Yeah, they've thrown him some uh, slip screens on the inside. They've used him on an inside reverse. And uh, Crowe's been trying to figure out a way to take advantage of his speed. He's been part of the offense today. Now BYU, after the 15-yard penalty, out of Matt Payne's field goal range, will have to punt the football away. Let's see if San Diego State can get some decent field position because they have been with their backs at their own end zone all second half. Kyle Connerly trying to make something happen. He's going to hope this sails into the end zone. And Matt Payne has been very good at getting it down inside the 20. This will come back to the 20. The big play of the quarter is presented by Xbox Live. Here's the Xbox big play, Blank. For BYU, it was a third and one, and they faked the lead and slipped the fullback out of the backfield. They had the linebackers fooled. Morrison bit on the lead play, and that left Tahi wide open for the touchdown. Bahu's second receiving touchdown of the game. There's a young man who led the Cougars in rushing attempts and in yards way back in 1999. Panasonic Ideas for Life when uh, either team records a first down. You'll see the Panasonic Ideas for Life pop up. Here comes Hamilton. Slithers through for a gain of about eight. Gennaro Guilford bringing him down. Well, and that's, this is the first decent field position San Diego State's had in a while. And you, you hate to say that the 20-yard line is good field position, but what they've been up against, this is good field position, and this is the first seam of daylight that Lionel Hamilton's seen in a while. Nice seam created. Aaron Francisco with the tackle, but not before a nine-yard gain for Hamilton. 20 carries, 83 yards. Little out route. Has his man. And I believe that's the first time we've called Jeff Webb's name after having a huge first half, his first reception of the second half. Well, Jeff Webb's going to get a big cushion in the second half of those deep balls. So this, these routes are going to be open. He's just running a quick out or a stop on the sideline. And, and uh, you know that BYU secondary is going to give him some room. He's proven he can go deep and run by people. Nine catches, 198 yards and two touchdowns. And those are the kind of numbers that Marshall Falk is used to. Put up numbers here. He's put up numbers as an All-Pro with the St. Louis Rams. Look at that stuff. I mean, seven times in the Pro Bowl, three-time All-American. I covered some games when he was at San Diego State. Unbelievably explosive was Marshall Falk. And they've compared Lionel Hamilton to Marshall. It's quite an honor at such a young age. Tom Kraft says that, you know, Certainly, Marshall played with more talent back in his day and a lot of guys around him. But, uh, I mean, uh, Lionel would love to have the kind of a career or part of the career that that man right there is. Well, and, and he said the difference. Marshall Falk is, is faster. Oh, yeah. He is just has explosive speed. He can go the distance on any play. And Hamilton. And there's Webb again, and he is going to take it all the way. Touchdown, Aztecs. yards and that puts him up to about 10 catches for 253 yards and three touchdowns. Well, and he just continues to run by people. That time working against Chad Barney again and Jeff Kraft 
or Tom Kraft. Look at that. Ten receptions, 253 yards. I'd say that's a career night. And uh, Tom Kraft has found a matchup that he likes, and he's working that sideline. Mejia, and messed that up again. They'll try for two. That was ugly. So that could come back to haunt as they pull within 11. We take a look at BYU trying to get some help. Barney's in press coverage that time, trying to get help over the top from the safety. Jared Mybos just a hair late. Yeah, took a bad angle, underestimated the speed of Webb, and needed to come over the top of the receiver. And if it's a completion, you still make the play. And then here's the missed extra point, the snap high and outside. Deep snapper Robbie Ryan not getting it done on that one. And uh, well, that's unfortunate for the Aztecs. Look at that. 80 yards. That was quick. Well, and Webb has been the answer tonight for San Diego State. When they need to generate some offense, it's just over the top to Webb. He has uh, had his own stepping out party here tonight. He will be well scouted throughout the remainder of the season. Now, teams have scouted Tom Kraft's receivers and knew that they had talent, and, and they've, they've been open this season. But now they have a man who can put the ball there. And again, Adam Hall puts it right where it had to exactly be. Exactly in the money. When he has had time tonight, he has been spectacular. Coach Kraft not too happy with the execution on the special teams. Mahal kick it off. A little low squitter. The up man has it. Trying to make something happen. It's Kyle Wilson. Backup fullback plowing out near the 40. Well, and BYU again with really good field position, and that's been the story for them offensively all night. Those up guys love to get their hands on the ball. Kyle Wilson, six footer, senior, 225 pounder from Spanish Fork through Dixie State. Looked like a fullback on that one. He wasn't about to pitch it back, was he? <laughs> well, he's a load. Wide toss. Brathwaite looking for some room. Nothing happening. Wrapped up by Kurt Morrison. He was practically carrying the telecast in the first half of the first quarter. It's somewhat silent uh, late, lately because I think they've gone away from him. Yeah, and watch this. To watch him pursue, it's just man on man. Watch him slide down the line, get through the mismatch, and when that cutback comes, Brathwaite looks back inside and goes, oh, no, there's the man, yeah. 34. Plays it perfectly, plays it from the inside out, takes away the cutback lane, and then makes the tackle. That'll perfectly cut, played. That'll cut into Ray's 17.3 yards per carry average. Loss of four. Second and 14. Back with time. Is there a flag coming? Yes, there is. Kirk Morrison appealing, but the flag came immediately after the contact on Daniel Coates. Well, when it's thrown from the backside from the field judge, you can almost count on you take the left hand and you put it on the back of the receiver. Defense. 15 yard penalty, so, automatic so, first down. So you go for the strip, but you take that backside hand and drape it over the receiver and hold on just for some insurance. And let's see if that's what Morrison does on this one. It's a crossing route. Here comes coach. See if that right hand's on. See it oh, there? Yeah. He's got the right hand draped around the wet waist. And when that flag comes in from the field judge on the backside, you know that's the call. And he did have a hold of Daniel Coates on the backside. Good strip on the front, but you can't hug him while you're doing it. <laughs> Not enough, though, for a first down. You know, Jeff Webb with his 253 yards right now, Tom. That's more receiving yards than any San Diego State receivers had on the season before this game. So, unbelievable night. Oh, now they've changed it down in distance. Unfortunately, puts the ball at the spot of the foul. First down. They've cleared up that confusion. And once again, the Panasonic ideas for life. First down. John Beck back in business, looking more and more confident. And he's uh, he's been thrown right in there, Blaine. Trying to lob it out to Coates, and it was almost picked off. 
Kirk Morrison didn't realize he had an interception waiting right there. Yeah, he, Morrison was breaking on the receiver. That's what you're supposed to do. And by the time he had a chance to look up for the ball, it was a badly thrown ball over the top, trying to put a little touch in it, trying to get it to Daniel Coates. And, and Morrison's breaking on the receiver because he wasn't in position. If you're on the receiver, you can look for the ball. If you're off of him, you break to the receiver. He did the right thing. And a bad throw over the top could have been intercepted. The dark side defense starting to make a few plays. They'll need them to get back in it. Brathwaite looking for room. Nothing doing. Runs into a pile there. Pick up of about one. By San Diego State here now in the waning minutes of the third quarter. Really starting to play better run defense against BYU. And another third and long for the Cougars. Aloha Lehi, Leah Lofi on that stop. Big number 63, 6'2", 250 pounder. And San Diego State in this situation, they've been coming after BYU. They've been blitzing, forcing John Beck to give up the ball early before his receivers can make those nine and 10 yard breaks. Let's see if they come after him again. Beck just won for his last six and here they come. Flips it out there and again, Coach had it right in his hands. May have been tipped. We'll have to see on the. Boy, and San Diego State consist, consistent with what they're doing. When it's third and nine or longer, they're going to come after you. Is there watch, a tip? Watch McCoy come. Beck's going to get rid of it. And you know what? Coach just wasn't ready to receive the pass. He didn't recognize the urgency with which John Beck had to get rid of that football and just turned his head just as the ball was coming. Beck was makes right a good there, play, though. and it was right on the money. Kyle Connerly waiting. Matt Payne's kick. Near the end of the third quarter, San Diego State trying to get back into this game. Well, and, and with their big strike offense the way they've been, I mean, it is well within reach right now. Payne's averaging 42 tonight. Came in averaging about 45. Nice kick. Connerly leaves it alone. And then he picks it up. And then he gets a block and ends up. Okay, that was kind of a wild play. He touched it a little bit, bounced it back, he picked it up. And well, I've, I've never seen this many balls touched on punts as they're coming down in a game before. And that one comes down and is touched. Now, San Diego State's going to have the option of getting the ball right there where Lance Pendleton touches it. But no, that's not enough. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> there he's he's going to take it and run it up the sideline, and it turns it into a good play. Very yep. dangerous yep. play, but it got San Diego State better field position than they would have had otherwise. Here comes Adam Hall and company. Bronco Mendenhall trying to find a way to slow them down. It's been feast or famine. They've either made big plays and scored touchdowns off of them, or they've been burned a few times with some deep balls. There goes Hamilton. And he runs into a wall there. Mike Tanner's in the middle of that. Big Efo Peely's in that pile somewhere. When that play should end the third quarter, and what a wild uh, quarter wow. again we had. There we go, Tom Kraft, guys, within 11 points as they start the fourth quarter. We promised a defensive struggle. We've given you 71 points. It is fourth down, the final play unless they can stick it in the end zone. Dorsey, under pressure, throws it! Incomplete, the Buckeyes win! And now the party begins for the Ohio State Buckeyes, and they are the national champions of college football. The Bowl Championship Series on ABC Sports, Championship Television. They tell me I've got something called grit. I don't strike the ball, they say. I attack it. I'm not sure what all that means. But I do know I'd play across the field of Kansas wheat to putt on a gravel parking lot if the stakes were right. And the last time I checked, no one ever won just because they kept a nice, clean crease in their pants. Catch Jim Furyk in the PGA Tour's best this season on ABC. Tomorrow's special is going to be vegetarian lasagna, but since spaghetti with marinara sauce was served today, 
The staff did not feel it was appropriate to have two Italian dishes in a row. Therefore, the new special is shepherd's pie. And lentil soup. Cut. As a former Florida State halfback, ESPN Classic thought I'd be the perfect host for real classics. They knew I had all the moves to present semi-tough, the long shard, and even great sports movies I didn't star in. What? Okay, here's the play. 8 o'clock, Sunday night, ESPN Classic. You stop at the couch, and the best sports movies of all time will be right there. Real Classics with Burt Reynolds. Where sports and movies collide. Welcome back to Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. Sports West bringing you the only Mountain West Conference game on the schedule this Saturday. Tom Kirkland and Blaine Fowler involved in a wild one. We've had a little bit of everything, and Aztecs trying to claw back in down 11 as we start the fourth quarter. All facing pressure. Lob job. It's tipped. He had a man wide open. Looked like Juan L. Penman was running free. Well, and, and, a, and a good read by Adam Hall that time because he felt the pressure, got up on that back foot and got the ball over the top to Pendon. But the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage and couldn't make the play. Brings up third down, third and ten. Big third down play early in the quarter. They can't expect the defense to continue to keep BYU at bay, which they've done the last couple of possessions. Offense needs to crank something up here. Third and ten, not... Very easy. Trips near side. Here comes David Nixon again. And Hall takes a shot. Picks up not near the first down. Casey Bills with some help from David Nixon on the play. And so the Cougar defense charges off the field. Mission accomplished. Boy, and Hall feeling that pressure, thinking he could get that first down yardage. But you saw the speed of the linebacker, David Nixon, as he, as he turned the corner. You see Hall shaking his head. Again, two linebackers through the same gap, and here comes David Nixon diving out, going to take those feet as Hall takes the hit, and San Diego State forced to punt now. Santoro gets it to turn over nicely, and Toby Christensen has to let it bounce, and uh, takes a San Diego State roll, 26-yard line, 36-yard punt. Now let's look at the numbers through three quarters presented by Computech Consulting. Technology problems? Not anymore. Well, you take a look at BYU running the football, but a lot of that one play with Brathwaite for 95 yards, 206 yards, 142 passing. Look at the total offense. 310 yards passing for San Diego State and 34 rushing. It's been big plays and big chunks of yardage, and those turnovers have, have proven costly for both teams in terms of points. Aztecs 34 yards rushing. They average 149 a game, but the Cougars' defense not letting them do anything. Brathway trying to turn the corner. Nothing doing. He'll lose a couple. They've kept their wraps on him. Marshall Falk's hand, and he had some knee surgery while he had that hand broken. He'll be missing a few weeks from the Rams, so happy to be here. And old stomping grounds and they'll certainly miss him boy for San Diego State here in the latter part of that third quarter now here to start the fourth quarter very solid on run defense BYU not able to find a crack in that defensive front to run the football they picked up their play and they had to or they would have had no chance here Peck over the middle back up tight end Justin Jory and he struggles across the 30 Matt McCoy holding on to bring up a third and short. Red Hanger is the home of drop and drive service. Drop and drive will save you even more time. Ask for details at any of our 100, or check that, they have a lot, but not 100. <laughs> any of our 14 locations, check the white pages for the location nearest you, Red Hanger. A big third down play for the San Diego State defense, desperately needing to get the football back for their offense. Little crossing route, and he has his man. And the difference for BYU that time, third and five instead of third and ten. Right. Well, third and five, if San Diego State blitzes, you can get rid of the football quickly and have a receiver at four or five yards. And so BYU, they're going to convert if they can get third and short, but those third and nines, tens, elevens, and twelves, San Diego State has really been able to dictate what BYU does on those downs by blitzing. 
You see the Panasonic ideas for life means it's a first down. Out near the Cougar 40. They'll try Brathwaite again, trying to cut back. Has a little bit of an opening, and it's quickly closed. Picks up two or three. Matt McCoy again. Cougar's in a position to make a big statement here, put it out of reach a little bit with a touchdown. I think what uh, Gary Croton would be thinking on the sideline is a sustained drive that takes time off the clock and puts some type of points on the board. And, and a lot of the drives in this football game for both teams have been quick strike drives. There's a flag there, and most likely some kind of an offensive motion fraction. Some of these have hardly been Burr dropped. to the snap. Full start, offense. Five-yard penalty, it remains second down. Well, so much for the bottom two offenses in the Mountain West Conference, huh? <laughs> Folks around the league watching here tonight are thinking, hey, I thought these guys were struggling. Yeah, one, one and two in the, in the conference in defense, yep. seven and eight in offense, and, well, you wouldn't know that tonight, would you? No. Second and 12 from Beck, trips left. Marcus Whalen, fake, and Beck trying to squirt for yards, and he barely gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Kirk Morrison with help from Steven Larson. They continue to run back, even though he, he takes a beating, but at 6'2 and 190, I, I guess he can take it. Yeah, and they're going to fake to, to Whalen, and Kirk Morrison lurking. In the middle there, keeping a spy on John Beck, and he makes a tackle. It's to a short three-yard game. Now you're in that third and nine. Yep. When San Diego State's been coming after John Beck, you would think that BYU would keep some people in, go max protection, and get those matchups. With Kirk Morrison, another huge game. Beck runs the option, looking for some help. He piss, pitches it wide, and Whalen is down well short in the first down. Steven Larson making the play. They had that well read. Very well played by Steven Larson. He had the pitch man. They got to John Beck. Coming down the line of scrimmage, watch it. Well played. Larson does a good job of slow playing. He forced Beck to make the pitch and slow played it and then moved out on the pitch man. He knew he had a lot of help inside and they took care of Beck's running lane, so he had to pitch it. Kyle Connerly back trying to make something happen. Here comes Matt Payne. Connerly looking for a return, cutting back. Has it up to the 30-yard line. Pretty good return. He's shown some escapability and some quicks. Just under 11 minutes to go here at Qualcomm Stadium. Aztecs back in business, although they're down 11, looking for some points on this drive coming up. Listen up! Television's toughest hour is a hit. Critics call Playmakers powerfully addictive. It's on now. Incredibly stark and uncompromising. That's what I'm talking about! You might not have the will to take your eyes off it. I will snap you at the knees. Great fun to watch. Searingly unflinching. You cheated! ESPN scores. The best 60 minutes of the year. Playmakers, the hit series continues. Tuesday, 9 p.m. on ESPN. One of those games yeah. where we see Oklahoma's defense all over the place just dominate. They well, they're quick. They're yeah, quick. They're so much check, check this out. You won't go to her! We ain't got a minute. You son, did you so well, Jim Deere? Find it out. That coach stoops us. When college game days on campus, you gotta step it up. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, 10 30 Saturday mornings on ESPN. Guys, guys, need a little more stuff from you. Come on. Oh, need a little more, a little action. Guys. Touchdown Irish. <laughs> ABC Sports, Saturdays, the home of college football. That G is the destination for the red and black attack. They need 
11 points to pull even. Bunch formation near side. Hall under pressure again. Lobs it a little too high, and it somehow it's caught. <laughs> it's good to be in the right position. Over the head of Jermaine Moore. But Jeremy Justice hauls it in. They pick up 12, just the way they diagram. Yeah, Jeremy Justice with the second level. I guarantee you, Hall was not going to Jeremy. He's trying to get it in here, and it's, oh, no. And Justice just is in the right place. And what a great catch. He, yeah, he hands jumped, and knees. He looked like Pele there. He's juggling it off the knees, bringing it back up to the hands. Well, Pele wasn't allowed to touch it with his hands. <laughs> it was good, though. <laughs> Al Hamilton trying to get something going as well. He's had a solid, steady game. Nothing spectacular, though. Time becoming a little bit more important here. Still plenty of time. Only down two scores if you count a you know, two-point conversion in there. Well, this offense has shown that a minute is about all it takes to score. Hall over the middle again. Has his man who has running room down the near sideline. And he's collared out of bounds. Gennaro Guilford finally hauling down to Robert Ortiz. And that's a big gainer. How about tacking on 20? But Adam Hall did a great job of keeping his feet and, and his eyes down, keeping his feet alive and keeping his eyes downfield. He was trying to go deep down the left side, then tried to go deep down the right side and came back off inside to Ortiz as his third receiver. Watch him. He went left. He's going looking back right. And then watch him come back in and find Ortiz. That's a veteran quarterback right there. I don't know if the Cougars have come off the pressure, but all of a sudden, Hall appears like he has a little more time. And here comes more pressure. It's red this time. And that ball's intercepted. It pops off of the hands of Jermaine Moore. And Kobe Bachwald says, that's mine. And the officials agree. Well, that was a weird-looking thing. The ball got stuck in there. looked like a good throw, and Buckwell's having a great football oh, he game. Is. He's already got a, a fumble recovery return for a touchdown, and now he picks up a fumble recovery or an interception. It's a devastating blow. The Aztecs were marching. Moving the football that good, time. Good shape. And Take a look. The ball thrown in there and just juggled, and the ball pops up right into Kobe Buckwell's hands. It was a well-thrown ball, should have been caught. Take a look. Inside to Moore, right up off of the off the hands, and Buckwald's there to receive it. Brathway looking for some room, trying to go around. He spins nicely. Picks up a hard two or three. Well, that, could, that could be the play of the game as far as the Cougars' defense is concerned here in the fourth quarter. As now the Aztec defense has to try to step in, and the Cougars able to chip away a few minutes here if they can drive. One, one thing you notice about the San Diego State defense, not a lot of cutback or bounce outside plays. They don't give those up. Brathwaite's been able to do that against other teams this year. He's tried to bounce it outside. San Diego State's got great team speed on defense. Beck, Beck loses it. That's a free ball. And there go the Aztecs. up the pig and plows in for the touchdown and it's uh it's not the circus but it feels like it an incredible turn of events take a look back coming on the bootleg pass coming out to the right watch it he's just gonna slip right out of his hand he's looking downfield now take a look ball just falls right out backwards never gets anything on it and picked up and gone san diego state with another big play defensively back in this football game Hello, Alihi, Getting the love from the teammates, and wow, do they go for two now? Is it, is it, is it the time, or is there plenty of time? What do you do? Well, but down by five, you go for two, it puts you within three. You got to go for two right now. Right. It's, it's, it's late enough in the game, yep. you got to go for two. So here's what they come up with. Huge turn of events, and the defenses have scored a couple of touchdowns, and there's a, too many men on the field. That's a total mess. And, Ten Cougars, nine Cougars in on the tackle. That that play was dead from the beginning because they were trying to get a player on the field. That flag is for 12 or 13 or 14 guys yeah, on the and, field. And, and San Diego State took too long to decide what they wanted to do. Took too long. Then they were in a rush, and in that mad rush, they didn't have the personnel on the field they needed, and that cost them the, the opportunity to get that two-point conversion. The penalty is insignificant here. Substitution infraction. Offense. The penalty is declined. The point is no good. 
Tom Kraft has seen a lot of good things. That was not one of them, but they're only down five after a, a, another ball on the ground. Bizarre Defenses play. have scored two touchdowns. Incredible. You're watching college football on Sports West. We're back after a message from your local station. I'm the new guy, so they quiz me on everything. 1987 rushing leader. Charles White. Longest return of a missed field goal. Chris McAllister, 107 yards. Minutes per pound to cook a turducken. Uh. Come on, girl, you gotta be quick with this stuff. Lisa Guerrero joins Al Michaels and John Madden on Monday Night Football. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone comes to play on Monday night. Let's go round the horn. Maybe Max is in reform. Next topic. Sports writers, learn your lesson. What is the best story here? Or you'll be gone. See you later. Ray. He'll shut you down. Say bye-bye. That's around the horn. Weekdays at five. Around the horn with Max Kellerman. Weekdays at five on ESPN. Yeah. Welcome to a world where animals rule. It's go time. Oh, yeah. that clears up the sinuses. And the only human around isn't human anymore. He's transformed into a bear. You're crazy. Gesundheit. <laughs> Walt Disney Pictures presents Here, an all-new motion picture event. I always wanted a brother. Brother Bear, rated G, in theater Saturday, November 1st. No, 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 he's a rabbit, eh? Look at his ears and his furry little feet. <laughs> This Sports West College football presentation is brought to you in part by your local Dodge dealer who invites you to grab life by the horn. Dodge. Aloha Lihi, Lea Lofi grabbed the pigskin by the horns and took it in. And Aztec's second defensive touchdown has them right back in this five point game. And now Brett Cooper tries to make something happen. BYU special teams on the kick returns have been solid. And there he goes. And he has big time quicks out to the 45 yard line. And there's improvement right there. BYU's. And there, there's going to be a flag. San Diego State was uh, offsides on the kickoff. BYU will decline that and take that good return. Brett Cooper showing us some of that speed. Encroachment. Kicking teams. The penalty is declined. The First down. Got a little, little anxious. You, you, you got a little anxious, and some of the cover guys were over the line before the ball was kicked. But a good seam created. He didn't get touched for Brett so Cooper and got up the sideline. Never was touched till the 42-yard line. And BYU's return teams, special teams, have been very solid tonight, giving uh, their offense good field position. First attempt from the 43. See if the Aztecs defense is up to getting the ball back. There goes Brathwaite. Running right through somebody. That was Jeff Schote. Not often that somebody runs over Schote. Pick up of four or five. Well, Brathwaite, not a big guy, but he runs low, and he will put his shoulder down the deliver a blow at the end. You take a look, and here's Brathwaite just finding a seam, going to the cutback lane, and then Schote has to kind of sit back. He's got a bad angle on that. He's sitting back on his heels, and Brathwaite able to run over the top of him at the end of that run. Local kid from... Spring Valley, Grossmont Junior College. What a comeback story he's been. Showing perseverance, and coming back from all kinds of stuff, and nothing doing on that play, however. Well, uh, BYU has gotten very conservative offensively here and the end of the third quarter into this fourth quarter, just trying to nurse that lead, and they've, they've gone more to the running game. And you see Brathwaite really having trouble finding any room inside to run against the stingy San Diego State defense, and they've been very solid against the run in this quarter. Keith Farwell in on the play, and then you see Dean looking for his hat, Josh Dean. Snaps it back on. Qualcomm up for grabs a little bit. Big play here. And here comes the pressure. Beck is down. There's a flag way in the secondary. Keith Farwell on the sack. There's, there's going to be a delay of game. And the thing is, that's a dead ball foul, so it'll be a five-yard penalty. They'll replay third down. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. It remains third down. So the sack never happened. 
And, and, and they got another shot at it. And, and for BYU, you have to know San Diego State's going to come. Third and long, I would say almost 100% of the time, San Diego State has blitzed. But, and he also and had football. a lot of time considering yeah, they consider pressure. It came from the outside. You have to know that that's yep. coming and be, be ready to get rid of that football. Mass substitutions as the Aztecs exit stage right. Third and 11. The slip screen and Hale is locked up. They smelled that coming. Kirk Morrison almost there before the ball. Well, at San Diego State, they've done a great job of dictating the tempo on third and long. Done a good job of forcing BYU into things there. And BYU, knowing they've been blitzing, going to try to do a screen, but Morrison reads it perfectly and steps over and makes the tackle on that slip screen to Chris Hale. Steven Larson helping him out. Looks like an old-fashioned. Aztecs Cougars game 41 36 looks like it'll go down to the last possession Payne and Connerly trying to get the edge cutting back Cougars great on punt cover right there 39 yard punt Sports West is your source for sports on the internet for the latest information on schedules and upcoming telecasts and be sure to enter to win exciting prizes, tickets, and special promotions from these featured sponsors. Log on now at sportswest.tv, powered by I4 Solutions. In legal formation, kicking teams. The penalty is declined. First down, San Diego State. I think Tom Kraft thinking, okay, 39-yard punt. We'll, you know, we'll take that as an offense and take the ball in decent field position out beyond the 20-yard line. Yep. Six and a half to go. Gary Curtin wants an explanation. You see Matt Berry standing in the background. He's due to come back any week now. Colorado State, it's a short week for Gary Curtin's guys. They have Colorado State on national TV next Thursday in Provo. There's Matt Berry trying to come back from spiral fracture on his throwing pinky. The ball in trouble. Ball gets out to Webb who drops it. When BYU came after Hall that time, he felt the pressure come and tried to get rid of it on a hot rate outside to Webb, who's having a, a career game tonight, and that ball got tipped, and he still almost came up with a catch. Take a look at his pressure in his face. You see Josh Brandon get up, get a hand on the ball, and Webb, that's a tough ball to catch. That thing's spinning all crazy ways and the nose down, but he almost makes the catch anyhow. Plenty of time left here. Five-point game. Somebody and it was dropped right into the hands of Robert Ortiz. Or check that. Lon L. Penman dropped it, and David Nixon tells him a little bit about it. Well, and what San Jose State's done well in this quarter, when the pressures come, Hall's been able to find the underneath receivers in the middle of the field. He throws a little three yard ball, and they've been turning it into big yardage. That was a catchable ball. Penman had room to run, and he just drops it. That's a drive killer right there. And Tom Kraft sees what's happening. And he doesn't like it. So instead of perhaps third and short or first down yards on that last play, try to figure out what they're going to do now. Ah, we're back to the old days. This is some of the numbers that have been put up over the years. There was that 52 all classic. Right smack dab in the middle. That 45-44 one in 1993, an amazing game as well. 92, a 45-38 one in San Diego State's favor. It, it has been one of those series where whoever has the ball last wins. The last time the Cougars were here, 2001, with the great Brandon Doman, Luke Staley teams. You know, and, and one that thing, was not Tom Crabb. Right, one thing unfolding here. San Diego State's offense has had to use two timeouts already in this half. They're left with one timeout. BYU has conserved their three timeouts. When this game comes down to the wire, you hate to have to use timeouts just because the play clock's running out. And twice San Diego State has done that now. And they're left with just one timeout. And you'd like to have some timeouts at an end of a game when it's a tight ball game. No question about that. That's what Blaine is referring to there. And there's a lot of time left. So they may burn their third one before they even get down into serious crunch time. 
Big third down play for Adam Hall. He's been able to convert here late in the game. From the Cougars, over the middle, almost intercepted as David Nixon read it perfectly. He sniffed it out and almost took it the other way for yet another defensive touchdown. Boy, and Adam Hall went back to the well one more time, tried to get the ball into the middle of the field when he had that pressure. That time, David Nixon in a good pass drop and in good position to make the play. He's having a heck of a football no game question. for a freshman linebacker. Going in for Levi Madrietta, who is here but out with a foot injury. Nixon has had an outstanding game. Now Seth Santoro once again. There's a booming kick. Kobe Christensen feeling it and runs right through two people. And now he has some running room out across the 40. 50 yard kick, but two Aztecs just missed Christensen and he tacked down about a 20 yard return. Well, the Cougars with the ball up five, just over six minutes to go. You don't want to leave this one. The biggest events in sports are on ABC Sports Championship Television. One of the amazing stories, Ben Curtis. Goodbye! Go! This is ABC Sports Championship Television. You're five feet nothing, a hundred and nothing, and you hung in with the best college football team in the land. What he lacked in size, he made up for in heart. You ready, champ? I've been ready for this my whole life. Rudy, see the movie and meet the inspiration behind this Hollywood classic. You walk in that locker room, you feel the ghost of all the great ones. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna go outside, we're gonna go, 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 go! 8 p.m. Sunday, only on ESPN Classic. And that's why they call Lands Road, Lands Road. Which reminds me of a story that, uh... ABC Sports, Saturdays, the home of college football. Buckle up for the last six minutes plus. John Beck and company trying to add to a five-point lead. Little out route to Chris Hale, breaks a tackle. And he's out of bounds at about the Aztecs 45. That's a good first down call. BYU has gotten in a habit the last several series of running the football on first down every time. We well, want to throw it, but you want to have a safe throw. This is just as good as run. It's a quick roll, just a hitch on the sideline. It's a no-risk throw. And it, and it breaks it up a little bit so that Aztec defense can't just load up against the run on first down. Aluminium missing the tackle in the open field, and Hale tacked on another 10 yards. Now they'll go back to the ground, and there goes Brathwaite right up the middle. He was about a step or two away from being caught again. And the success, when BYU's had success running the football, it's been right at the middle of the San Diego State defense. When they've tried to go laterally, San Diego State's team speed on defense has been able to get into those cutback lanes, but they've been able to pop Ray Brathwaite open when they run right at that defense with those big guys in the middle of the offensive line for BYU. Kirk Morrison barely slowed him down with a big paw on his jersey. He could have been gone again. BYU doing what they wanted to do. A couple of plays. They're moving into Aztec territory, getting close to Matt Payne's field goal range at least. And now Beck says, give me a timeout. Burned as much clock as he could. He knew he wanted a smart play. He knew he wanted to call a timeout. Looked at the play clock. Wants to run the game clock down, then calls the timeout. He didn't have what he wanted out on the field. Again, they use a timeout. You, you wish you wouldn't have to use one of those, but didn't have the right personnel in the game. Knew he would have to use it, so he waited until the play clock was right down to one second and then called the timeout. The 
There's a couple of great offensive minds. Three great offensive minds if you include the young John Beck Robbie Bosco and Gary Croton in there. But well, it looks like they're talking about some type of a throw. Big play of the quarter is presented by Xbox Live. Here's the Xbox big play. Boy, Pat, and you see the ball never started forward. They wonder if it's a fumble or not. Ball never goes forward. As Beck tries to throw it, it falls right out the back. And a defensive touchdown for San Diego State. And there have been a lot of big plays on defense for both of these teams tonight. Aloha Lihi Lealofi scooping it up. They'll be talking about that one for a while, but it'll feel a lot better if they can come back and win this. First down for the Cougars. Marcus Whalen alone in the backfield. There goes Toby Christensen. The toss to Whalen. And he runs into some people. Kirk Morrison again. Boy, and there was a collision. There is some pad popping going on out there right now. And we talked about Whalen. He's a downhill runner. And Morrison, he's, he's, just flex, he's flexing the muscle a little bit. Watch him, watch him straight this is down. A big time hit. Bam. And I mean, he just rocks people. Yeah. He's still talking about it, even though he had to he got, feel that. He got up and he uh, flexed the right bicep. That's okay. You, if you can back it up, you can talk. And he certainly can back it up. Some of those defensive guys are not of sound mind, are they? But if you're, if you're a linebacker, you're almost better off not being. It goes back up the middle as they get down near first down yardage and right in Pat Payne's field goal range. Ryan Ayata corralling him there. I'll tell you, if you're BYU and you're Gary Croton down there, you are not comfortable with any time left on the clock and a five-point lead the way San Diego State's been able to go deep. Right. And so, so he's thinking a must get for a field goal and be a lot more comfortable with a touchdown here before he feels like this game is put away. Third and short. Back over the middle. Broken up. And there's a pass interference flag coming in from the back. Jacob... Elamimian on the coverage, they're going to flag him now, I believe. Well, and Elamimian that time, not even, you, you know, she's just coming back calmly. Like busted? Thinking he's busted? Yeah, it's interesting because there's a lot of talk here. If this is just a simple pass interference penalty, it's a lot of talk right here. Could have been a hold. You saw that gesture in there. Mm -hmm. It's probably, is it a hold or is it an interference? There are two fouls on the defense. Okay. Pass interference. That penalty is declined. Holding defense. That penalty is accepted and results in a first down. And the reason they're going to take the holding penalty is pass interference, if it's less than 10 yards, it's just a spot foul. So it would only be like a four-yard penalty where holding is 10 yards from the original spot. So BYU will take those 10 yards and take the first down. So he held him, and then when he was beaten, then he interfered with him? I don't know if it was the same guy. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same guy on both flags. Could have been. I mean, if you're going to do something wrong, just do it all on That's one right. play. So Cougars in business. This could be game time here if they can punch one in. Taking the pathway, throwing it out, and there is Justin Jory, the tight end, inside the five. Well, in a two tight end route, you had Justin Jory on top, the second level, Daniel Coach underneath, giving Beck a bootleg choice. And I'll tell you what, he has thrown some good balls tonight. He has a, a rifle of an arm. I'll say this, I know Gary Croton has said that as soon as Matt Berry is back and healthy, it's his job, but it'll be very hard to get John Beck out of the lineup, especially the way this offense has clearly come together tonight, and he is throwing passes right on the hand. There goes Brathwaite plowing closer to the goal line. And we're at four minutes left in the game. Right, BYU wanting to use up as much time as they can and score a touchdown here. This drive right now, six plays, 54 yards, and churning up 
or taking time off the clock as they did. There's Beck's number 17 of 26, 180 yards and two touchdowns. Very efficient game. Yep. And he's probably over 50, close to 60 yards rushing, not, too. Not the big yardage that you see out of Adam Hall in this game, but an efficient game running this offense for BYU. He's had some fumbles, but still he has run the offense very well. And they're down right near the goal line. Time continues to run down. Went down to about the one yard line. BYU empty backfield that time. And uh, trying to get San Diego State to spread out a little bit. But they still have every, had, had every gap covered on that defensive front. They scored 76 points in the first five games. The fewest points to start a season in 33 years. And, and they're getting close to 50 here tonight if they punch this in. Right, and Scott Jackson, BYU's uh, center, just came out of the game. Been troubled by and a knee you're problem. Gonna, you're going to see BYU take a timeout again with one second left on the play clock. I think the, some of the, the problems coming from the Cougar Nation not only had to do with some of the losses, two times they've lost the home back-to-back -back for the first time in 10 years, but also the lack of offensive production. But a lot of people are going to be happy with 41-plus, whatever they get here. Well, and these are two, two programs, the San Diego State and, and, and uh, BYU, where the fans' expectations are that they're in games like this. Yeah that they create excitement, that they have all kinds of offense, because that's the history, that's the tradition of these two programs. And when the fans don't see that, they get very restless. And let's remember what, what Jerry Crows has done here. He, he had his veteran, the guy who was a Richard freshman last year starting, first one since Ty Detmer, Matt Berry's out, making some plays, he gets hurt, and then the next thing you know, the true freshman, John Beck, even though he got a lot of reps in the spring and in, and in August football, they love him. They think he really grasped the offense. He watches tape a lot. He's very well prepared, but he's still a true freshman. And his job's made a lot easier by big number 64. There's yeah. Scott Jackson. They, got, they had Jackson come out. They used that timeout. Now Jackson's back in. And if you're going to run the football down on the goal line, you want 64 down there leading the way. Tahi and Brathwaite. There goes Fahu, and he will be denied at the two, and that is a very big play. Ryan Ayana leading the charge for the dark side. And, and, and this has been a concern for BYU for two years running now. Oh, yeah. When you get the ball down inside the five-yard line, you have to be able to get a surge with your line and to knock people off the ball. And somebody coming clean from the outside and getting Tahi from the outside. He never had a chance. Not, not even able to get going and get his pads down. and. Uh, you got to be able to effect effectively run the ball. Now, BYU will kick and, and try to go up by eight here on fourth down. You would think they would kick it and go up by eight. Yeah, here comes Matt Payne. So eight, that's still a one-possession game for San Diego State, the, the touchdown and the two-point conversion. And, and this is, Tom, this is not an easy kick by any means because when you're at extra point range, and this is shorter than extra point range, you're usually in the middle of the field when you're kicking an extra point. But when you're this close, that angle is very severe and, and the, the distance between those uprights becomes very narrow. You have to be more accurate. This is a tougher kick. Matt Payne, I guarantee you, would rather be back 15 yards from here on that right hash than trying to kick it from here. You know how confident he is. You think he's going to have a problem with this? Do you think he thinks he's going to have a problem? No, he doesn't think <laughs> He doesn't think. I'm just telling you. No, said, that's a I tough kick. I don't want to do it. Do you no, want to do it? No, no, no. I'd never get it off the ground. Are you kidding? 18-yard <laughs> little uh, lob wedge. And you're right, compared to a 52 or 53 yarder where you just hammer it, this this involved, you know, you had to steer it and, and, and figure it out a little more. Takes a little touch. Yeah. He can make all the kicks. Now, two minutes and 18 seconds. Eight Eternity. points. One timeout. Eight points. San Diego State is capable yep. of getting the ball in the end zone. They've got the team speed to do it. They've got the guys on the outside. And you go for two and, and go into overtime. You said you were feeling an overtime coming on. Did I say that? Yeah. Who wouldn't want to work a little longer in a game like this? Right, Blaine? We're on, uh, what are we on? Three and a half hours? Yeah, we're, we're just over three and a half hours. Marshall Falk got here uh, about halftime, I guess. We do a... <laughs> We do an Air Force game, and it lasts two hours yep. and 20 minutes, yep. and we come. This is typical BYU-San Diego State. Three and a half hours later, the game's still on the line. Mm -hmm. And, of course, in our open, we talked all about the fourth 
best defense in the country and the 13th best defense in the country. Don Coriel says, this is how football should be played. <laughs> should be up and down like basketball. That was a nine play, 55 yard drive that chewed up almost four minutes. I mean, it's, it's not a touchdown and I'm sure they'll be upset that they didn't punch it in. Here comes the return. And, and BYU's, yeah, BYU's cover teams have been very good today, and the return teams have been good. Nine plays, 55 yards, 352, resulted in three points. And at the beginning of that drive, we said Croton needed to get some kind of points and take time off the clock, and they did just that, that on that drive. Now it'll be interesting to see what Bronco Mendenhall does defensively, because you know if you, if you, if you risk reward, if you bring a lot of pressure on Adam, that's going to open up people underneath or people deep. Got plenty of time here with one timeout. A little out route. Jermaine Moore scampers out after picking up, looks like eight or nine. Now we'll call it seven. All the coverage, Tim Nielsen. Paul actually has no timeouts. They, they called one down when the Cougars were threatening to score. But still, with timeouts, or with the clock stopped on first downs, and the way they've moved the ball down the field, it, there is a lot of time, except he's running out of time. Brady Papenga chasing him down there. But Adam Hall feeling the pressure getting out, does the right thing, he throws the football away. He's gonna bring up. You know, a short yarded situation now instead of being sacked or, or risking an interception. Uh, Hall's been impressive tonight. He has had all the deep throws. In fact, that last series, when they had an opportunity to make some plays, he threw some good throws in the middle of the field and they were dropped on him. Yeah, and, and just because if this holds up, I mean, if the Aztecs were to start out 0 1, I mean, there's not a coach in the conference that believes that the winner of this conference will go undefeated. I don't believe. No, I, I think you're right. Although Air Force and Utah may take issue with that. Over the middle. And is there a flag coming in? Chad Barney says no. And there is no flag. Kobe Bachwald has had a solid game. Two minutes to go. Still 